on December 18th. And we are live, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> this alpha has a panic attack. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pathleos Session 33. Uh, we are currently trying to console Alpha as the second the stream went live. Uh, he, he, he's gone in, he's become inconsolable. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to anymore. Uh, good game, right, guys. I'll catch you next Thursday. Bye. <laughs> Y'all. Uh, gonna make like my dad in. Um, All right, then. <laughs> But, what? How many um, welcome everybody <laughs> to the stream. This is, as I said, session 33 of D&D uh, &D Paphleus 5th edition with these four wonderful people. Uh, we have Helminia, we have Alpha, we have James, and we have um, Suzanne. Just all four of these wonderful people willing to deal with my stuff week in and week out. And we've gotten... Um, Let's say we've gotten at least okay at doing what we're doing. <laughs> at this point, are we really dealing with your bullshit or our own bullshit? Uh, it's everyone's. I, I really should have. I really bullshit. should have labeled the streams the consequences of my actions or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good. Oh look, the consequence. Oh look, consequences. That would have been a, a good, a good title. I, I would have liked. Upsetty spaghetti. Upsetty. Oh, Up the. Uh... Uh, <laughs> there we go. Ah, yeah, it's all it's all good. Um, but we're gonna go into a quick recap to catch up people who have missed um, what we've been what we've been doing. Where we last left off with uh, our Pathleos, the party had returned to Greywall and had um, <laughs> returned to Greywall. And had begin um, basically um, re-acquainting uh, themselves, resetting themselves up uh, amongst a place, a city that they used to um, have their abode in, and now they've been returning to with at least a month away in the um, northern warscape of Formios. Um, upon returning. Uh, the group had found out that um, fellow members of the Fighters Guild for Gilgamesh had been um, kidnapped, and the group as one unit went to go um, assist them. Long story short, with a, a lot of issues, a lot of troubling, a lot of yelling, um, the <laughs> group managed to rescue members Terra and Soa of the Fighters Guild. As they have returned, the group, um, during this, the group came to a bit of a, um, another one of their, uh, coming to the head with Gilgamesh and his attitude towards the rest of the group, and tensions began to boil over. With this put aside, as everyone's lives were at risk for the time being, the group, um, swept through the rest of the prison, discovered some things, um, some possible connections, to uh, other outside forces that they found in Formios and headed back to Greywall. With people returned um, and Terra, Soa, and Tyron recovering, uh, Rem decided to take Gil on a walk. With the two of them walking through the quiet atmosphere of Greywall, um, Rem seemed to open up to Gil a little bit. However, eventually their walk came to an end at the shattered remains of the Fighters Guild, where Rem challenged Gilgamesh to a one-on-one -on -one duel, where they not only then were able to dispatch Gilgamesh in a fight, but also let them slowly bleed out on the hardened sand of the Fighters Guild floor. Upon this, uh, upon this happening, Gilgamesh himself seemed to be caught between 
a rock and a hard place both manifesting in his mind before waking up, catching his breath, feeling the air fill his lungs of Rem reviving him. Tears in Rem's eyes and a three fingerprints seemingly burned into the left side of Gilgamesh's face. Rem walks away, leaving the um, magical um, spiritual weapon next to Gilgamesh's face. Eventually it fizzles away. And Rem, as you are walking away from this, your feet move from sand to the ruined wood of the Fighters Guild, then to the cobblestone of Greywall, as you're simply putting one foot in front of the other, not thinking too much now. And Gilgamesh, all you are doing is thinking as you lie still motionless, but slowly breathing, exhaling, inhaling, some of the sand getting into your mouth and then blowing out the blood mixing in with the sand. With this, the quiet night of Greywall for you two has been forever disrupted. What would you two like to do? I'm just heading back. I'm not stopping. Okay. Gilgamesh, is there anything you'd like to be doing? Um, uh, you know, I'm just, just sitting, just sitting in the sand. Not, not, not doing, like, anything right now, really. Okay. Now, for... Um, Suna and Zex, uh, you two have been, um, still at the Mages Guild. Zex, you followed them, um, for a little bit and then decided upon yourself to return to the Mages Guild, not following them all the way. Um, Zex, as you return into the quiet sounds of the Mages Guild, you can still see some people sitting at their tables. Some have left. Some seem to have arrived. Um, Suna is still... I'm sure I'm in my room, aren't I? You said you were just returning. I'm not sure if you I went to your room. I sworn I said I went directly to my room from the three. Let me check the DMs real quick. It doesn't matter. If you want to okay. be going to your room, you quickly head up the stairs, enter your room by yourself. Suna, you see... Zex enter in and immediately head upstairs. The night as it's started to go longer, you watch the people that you were sitting around slowly, one by one, get up from the table and retire. It is late at night. <laughs> it is the end of the day. However, if there's anything you'd like to do, you can. Um... No, I think I'll just head up to my room. All right. You take the same initiative and head up to your quarters. The thought lingers in your head that Rem and Gil aren't back yet, but the night's still there. The morning isn't fast approaching. They could just be taking their sweet time. And with that thought in your head, you retire into your room as well. Rem, you eventually make your way completely back to the Mages Guild alone. The colder temperature of the Greywall air is kind of stinging your face and as you enter back in you can look into the dining hall where the tables have been kind of collected you can see everything is empty and the mage's guild is still
I'm just gonna go to my room and sleep for the night. All right. As Rem retires, Gilgamesh, is there anything else you would like to do? Um, how, how late would you say it is right now? Um, it's probably comparable to like 10 o'clock. Um, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here for like just a couple more hours, no more than like two. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, after that, I'll get up and head back to the guild. All right. As you take this time, eventually slowly getting yourself, um, putting yourself in a sitting position from the lying on your face position you were originally in, you take it in, and as the hours kind of go by the slight it almost feels like there's a a bundle of static on the left side of your face the lower part of your jaw as you can feel very distinctly the tingle that the marks bring does anything happen if i like touch them I just, like, touch, my face. touch them. It just feels like there's an irregularity in your skin. It's hmm. like you were. It's, it, it's kind of comparable to if someone grabbed your face and then sent lightning through said face. Okay. All right. the two hours you spend sitting at the Fighters Guild pass. No seeming change. Uh, The actual, like, tavern that you can hear up the street eventually seems to close down. You can hear the sound of intoxicated people shuffling their way out, moving to their houses. Uh, The slurred and obnoxiously loud speech of people deep within their spirits. Um, As that tavern closes down, you see the lights flicker out in it, and you are seemingly truly alone. Just make my way up to my room. Okay. And then, you know, of course, sleep. That is. <laughs> okay. As you uh, just kind of make your way, everything's quiet, everything's dark. And then you find your way up to your room. And sleep finds you very quickly. As all of you find sleep and everything quiets down around you and you all drift off into your separate oblivions. It's not enough to keep you awake, Gil, but it's enough to be noted that the marks on your face are enough to keep you awake for a couple extra minutes past what you would have considered normal. But sleep finds all of you. As all of you gain the benefits of a long rest with a day, new day, finding you, um, you all slowly come to consciousness A new day, sound of people, um, you can hear sounds of people setting up things far away, the general bustle of the town square in the middle of Greywall. What would you all like to do? Um, I'll just head downstairs and have breakfast. Okay. Okay. 
Anyone else? Um, I want to sharpen my great sword in my room. Okay. Just. I guess. Okay. Zex as well. I guess I'll head downstairs. Okay. Rem? I started my day by drinking in my room. Okay. My last bottle of golden wine. I'm opening that up. All right. And Suna and Zex, you two find yourselves in the dining hall of the Mages Guild. Uh, it's a pretty standard breakfast of um, general water, juice, um, eggs and meats, um, some fruits being brought as well. It, it's still a pretty good um, breakfast. It's better than what you guys have on the road. Um, as you guys have this brought out to you, no one else is in the dining hall. Uh, I would like to look outside around how late in the day does it look. Uh, it's still relatively early. It's probably around like 9 o'clock. Uh, it hasn't passed into the afternoon, but um, without a, like, just basically <laughs> without much of an alarm clock, um, you guys drift a little bit, bit later into the morning than probably most people do. Are they normally uh, sleep in this late? You ask uh, me. No, not. <laughs> oh, that's Gonzax. Alright. I don't know what time do we normally get up. You've been very, um... No one's really set a time that you wake up. You guys have just kind of drifted awake. I don't know, probably we just Rem get up. usually sleeps the latest. Alright. Well, I need to go check some uh, some stuff out around town real quick. I'll be back later today. I'm gonna get up and leave. Okay. I need to. Uh, I want to head to Viper's Weapons first. All right. And Suna, are you doing anything? Um. Yes, actually. Uh, I want to form a weapon bond with my long sword okay so as zex pushes away you begin doing this and this uh zex as you're just kind of walking away you see suna take out the long sword and begin just kind of setting it on the table in a kind of ritualistic fashion hmm. interesting interesting okay with nothing else, just let me know when you guys, uh, in the accordance of Gilgamesh and Rem, when you're coming down. And soon if you're doing anything. Otherwise, Zex, we head out to... Um, we head out to Vipers. As you make your way down the streets, you can see people kind of, again, bustling... More traffic seems to have been gray wall than you're used to uh, from when you left. And um, there, there's just generally people in the car, people in the streets, um, carts being pulled, um, people carrying um, like parcels and, and, and different l l packages like filled with possibilities. Um, people kind of running throughout the streets, some people in a hurry, some people on a leisurely stroll. But you make your way across the street and eventually find your way to Viper's Weapons. Um, as you enter the place, the familiar man with um, a red braid going down the back um, kind of spins around and sees you and his uh, face kind of 
um, change of just like someone just kind of going about their day into the like a standard um, retailer to customer smile. Hello. Uh, welcome back. Hello. <laughs> Pleasure to see you. Pleasure to see you too. Oh. I just uh, wanted to come back and check on the progress. That's good progress. Um, should be done for you in not too long. Give me a couple days to work out a little. Uh, work out a little bit of the imperfections. Don't want to give you a tainted product. Um, but other than that, it's coming along quite smoothly. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Sounds good. Of course. Is there anything else you need? Uh, not currently. I just wanted to come in and check up. Mm. Of course. I, I guess I'll leave then. All right. As you exit the building itself, you can see people kind of gathering in the actual square. You can see um, kind of fire pits that have been built by stalls of people roasting and grilling meat. You can see um, there's a tallish man, um, kind of stood up by the center fountain, who's just, uh, you can hear yelling out, Come on, come all, come, and test your luck. Try yourself. Test everything dear to you and win something even dearer. As people kind of gathering around looking at him, and then others kind of, peeking at what he has and seemingly maybe he's standing on it maybe it's something underneath the box he's standing on some shaking their heads and like moving away um even further down the square you can see there's like an older woman like tightly bundled up as the weather's starting to get colder kind of sitting in a comatose position but you can see a deck of cards kind of pushed out on the um on the carpet in front of her and then um closest to you actually um kind of sat on our carpet you can see a young like half elfish man um dirty clothes um unkept hair he's got kind of like trinkets of the more mechanical kind just spread out you can see um just general metals of silver and uh copper and brass just kind of spread out on this blanket of people are in a kind of festive mood today as there's a lot of activity in the square okay i want to go check out this guy who's tall <laughs> see what he's on about uh the man in the center of the square yes that guy all right as you kind of approach you can see that there's a crowd of uh, mostly young men kind of around him as he's uh, as you begin to approach him, he hops down and it begins moving between you. You can see him putting his hand on their shoulders, talking to them, patting them on the chest, uh, looking like he's kind of like, like boosting their confidence before he moves on to the next and gives the same thing. Um, as you make your way up, it kind of, you catch his eyes. Hello, is this another young man looking to test his luck and his skill against those of others around him? What is it, like a tournament or something? Oh, simply the finest of competitions I can offer, my good sir. It's a simple foot race. Those who can pit themselves against others can win something of magical importance. Really? Those whose legs are cherished by them deserve to have a magical item to be even fonder of. How soon does this race start? About two hours. I'd like to start it right before people have their lunch and are full. That makes for slower legs and lacking minds. Ah, uh, I see. Are there any parameters for the race? Any rules I would need to be aware of if I'm to sign up? You have to be running on your own two legs. And... Uh, it's no, I would love to say no enhancements. This is something you'll earn by the sweat of your brow. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. I'll try. I'll sign up. Wonderful. And you 
there's there's no there's no like sign up mm-hmm. he basically just kind of comes up to you do you feel his hand just clasp onto your shoulder and he's like i'll be seeing you then and immediately turns around and begins heckling another person okay well i'm gonna head to the spectral allies then after this is over okay <laughs> As you kind of make your way through, um, he's getting a, as you're kind of looking back as you're exiting, he's getting a good crowd of just, it's seemingly to attract mostly young men. Um, you see like elves, half orcs, um, just humans and just people interested in proving themselves. And it seems mm-hmm. to be a lot lighter in spirit than the Halls of Glory was. Um, you okay. Okay. Make your way over to the Spectral Allies, and as you push open the door, you can see the familiar, tall, elven form of Barris. She turns and sees you. Hello. (laughs) It's been a while. What may I do for you, Sex? It has been a while. Uh, I just wanted to come in and check up to see how, uh, how close you were to getting the payment ready to go. Oh, um, I've been taking out several payments um i couldn't do it daily of course um i've been running um running my suppliers dry actually um but i've been able to pull a few strings and i have the majority of it it'll probably still take me a week to get everything if that's what you want all right (laughs) it's not easy to pull this much gold Oh, of course, of course. And, of course, as you know, even though we are referring to it as gold, you'll get it all in platinum, of course. Of course. Alright, well, I think we can probably wait another week. Remember, you're allowed to take some if you need it. It's still your gold if you give me the scroll. It's... It's just how it works. Right. No, no, we'll wait. We'll wait a week. I'm good. All right. Of course. All right. All right. I guess um, I'm going to head back to the uh, Mage's Guild. Okay. Um, Just general, this, this jollier atmosphere that's shown itself um, as you make your way through. Um, Suna, you've completed working on this, I believe. I don't think it takes that long. It takes about an hour. Yeah, that's that's a good amount of time. Is you're kind of finishing up putting the blade away. Zex comes back through the door. Nothing extra, but um, just kind of stepping through. You see Suna putting away the weapon in the exact same place you seem to have left her. Is anyone else up yet? No, no one else is up yet. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go pay Gilgamesh a visit. So, okay. All right. As you step up the stairs, head up. Head to Gilgamesh's door and knock on the door. Yes. Not sure if you're interested about this, but it sounds like there's going to be a foot race later today. I'm going to get up and like go and open my door. A foot race. I see the scar that's on his face. Oh, it's pretty. It's pretty mm-hmm. visible. It's pretty, what the hell happened to your face? rather get into that when everybody would be here. It's a long story, Dex. Fair enough, I guess. Yeah, foot race down in the uh, the main square. And is there a prize involved? Uh, yeah, some kind of magic item. Uh, the guy said no enhancements, but I'm sure... You could probably get away with it if you don't go that much faster than your normal speed. If you wanted to do that.
do we know what this magical item is or what it does? Ah, uh, no. He just he just said it was for some kind of magic item. Are you interested? There's nothing else to do, so I guess. All right. Is that all? Uh, yes, that's all. And then I'll give him a give him a nod and walk past him down to the to the uh, main area, if you would. Yes, I'll go with him. Okay. As you both head down, you can see Suna still present at the table. No sign of Rem. Seeing that there's no sign of Rem, mm -hmm. I'll ask Zex. Have you heard from Rem yet? Uh, I have had yet to see him. Do we know if Rem even came back last night? Uh, No. I suppose you would know better, wouldn't you? You're the one who was out with him. All I know is that I saw him leave, but I don't know where he went. All right. As this is happening, you guys actually hear a bit of a kind of a clanging sound, um, similar to armor going downstairs. And you can see that standing there is Rem, um, heading their way down, eyes kind of fuzzy, washed over, and just kind of heading towards the door, slowly but with purpose. Or it's like the, the door to leave? Mm-hmm. Hey, let's... Ram, stop. Wait. I'm not. Pushes open the door, and you can see them exit as the door swings closed. What the hell? <gasps> I guess that's that. Wonder what guy, what's, what his problem is right now. You wouldn't happen to know, Gil, would you? Last night, Rem had to make a, uh, interesting choice. Maybe we should follow him? Does he want to be followed? If anyone's to follow him, it won't be me. I'm probably the last person Rem wants to see right now. Okay, I guess I'll follow Rem out. Okay. Or I guess I'll step out and see if I can find him since he left already before. Mm -hmm. it, it, they're not moving fast. Um, as you open the door, you can see Rem just kind of slowly making their way down the road. If you're going to follow him, is anyone else going to? Um, I'll come with. Okay, the two of you. Seeing both Zex and Asuna leave, I'll sit there for... No, I, I won't sit there for terribly long, and I'll get up and follow. Okay. It's easy for you guys to keep track of them. Um, as they begin making their way to the streets, it, it's slightly more crowded. Um, not too terribly much, as you guys haven't actually made it to the square. Um, you can see, uh, Rem kind of moving their way. Um, are you going to, uh, I'd assume you're, you're going to where you know you can get what you want, right? Yes. Okay. 
So you see them kind of make their way down and across as they begin to um, actually make their way into the main square, kind of just slowly moving their way through people, um, not really seeming to notice or maybe not caring that the three of you are following. You eventually watch as they push their way up slightly northward in the square and enter the mage's mug. I'm gonna follow him in. Okay. Follow after Zax. I've never oh. been to this place before, have I? Nope. You've never been in a bar. Um, he never goes to them. No. He's been in one when we met Tara. What I thought... It. I thought the day that we went to uh, go and like raid the underground area, we all were just talking in the mage's mug. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember. No, we didn't. That was. Gil wasn't there. Gil's been in one bar. That was to meet Tear, and that's it. He has no reason to go into them. He doesn't drink. All right. So okay. We, every time we've gone, he refuses to go. And uh, that trend will hold very strong. I will refuse to go in and just kind of lump my way roughly near the door outside. Okay. <sighs> As the two of you go in, and Gil kind of sticks by the door, you watch Rem... Uh, make your way to the counter. Rem, you can see the uh, human barkeep just look at you, kind of look you over as you make your way in. <clears throat> Rem? Ooh, uh, barkeep's name. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, jeez. I have that the pages. I, 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 this was so long. History check! Oh, 21, I remember. His name is Marshall. Ah, yes. Um, I'm going to greet him by his name that I clearly knew. Uh, Marshall. You alright? Bit sauced already, but you know how it goes. Mm. You looking for something to help you get through that, or...? I'm going a bit deeper into the sauce. Mm. Five bottles of my usual, please, and a cup. Five bottles. Okay, that's a lot. One for here, some for the road. Unless you know somewhere else I can get them. No, I hate I, to clear I, you out. I can, I can get you them. It's just... It's not cheap wine. You know. You're, you're still going for the Yerian wine, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I can get you the wine, sure. Absolutely. Um... 10 gold a piece for the bottle, right? Yeah. It's not cheap wine, you sure? I'm sure. Alright. The cheaper you drink, the worse off you tend to be. And the only thing keeping most people from drinking is cost. Hmm. It's best to keep it that way, don't you think? Of course. It's just enough to drown a small man. Are you making a jab at me, Marshall? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm sure you can take care of it. It's just... It's a double-bladed sword sometimes, and... I'm just gonna get you one right now, and then... We'll make sure you don't... Four for the road, one is for here. I oh. stock up for on the road, but I drink a lot less when I'm out. And the last two I happen to give away to some friends. Hmm. Alright. <clears throat> Sure, 50. I'm going to lay down my last five platinum. <clears throat> he kind of scrapes it off the table into his palm. Right. I'll be right back. And he actually dips underneath the bar for one. As you see, he pulls up a bottle unopened, puts it on the table, takes a cup out, puts it on the table. We'll be back for the other four. And exits. As Zex and Suna, you see this exchange. Hey, I'm gonna walk up to Ram and say, it's a, it's a little early to be drinking, don't you think? 
but never too late to mind one's own business. The fuck is wrong with you, Ram? Let me have my rest for the day. Why don't you go enjoy yourself? Something clearly happened last night. It's no business. Well, you Frill was Gilbert out. It's no business of mine to tell the story. All right. Enjoy my drink. I'm pouring my cup. Try not to get too drunk. Then I'll walk away. All right. As you guys are allowed to go about your day in any way you want to. Just tell me what you're doing. I'm gonna... hmm. Has it been? How long has it been since I talked to this guy? It's not been two hours. Not been two hours? No, you've, you've still got a good amount of time. Well, let's see how much money I have on me. Um, why don't we... Why don't we just wander around the square and check out what's going on? I want to go see that lady who had cards. Okay. Sooner you watch as X walks out into the square. Gilgamesh, as X walks past you. I'll, I'll walk okay, out wait, as well. I wanted to invite them to come with me. Then do Crap. what you're going to do. Gil, Suna, it looks like Rem is trying to drink something away. He's in a pissy mood. We should. I'm just going to explore for a little bit, uh, check out the festivities. Either you want to come with? Um, yeah, I'll come with. I'll catch up with you guys, uh, guys, in a minute. All right. Okay. You sure you don't want us to uh, wait up for you, Gil? No. I just have some uh, assumingly short business to attend to. I'll be out soon enough. All right. Slip my way into the bar. Okay. As you move your way and you can... As you were outside, it was still mostly the crisp morning air... The smells of kind of cooking meats over fires by stalls kind of wafting over to you. As you enter in, the smell of ale and um, almost like more of like like uh, uh, like beans and uh, different other like cheaper breakfast foods come into your nose. Um, as you kind of step your way in, you can clearly see where Rem is sitting at the bar drinking wine. Okay. And sit next to him. <clears throat> Something I can help you with? Is there something that I can help you with? I've been told you're trying to drink the day away. You don't drink, so you wouldn't understand, but drinking away a day or two isn't all that bad. Rem, I don't usually do this, but I'd rather advise you not to drink as heavily as you do, at least. I know my own paces. You don't have to worry about me. It's not out of worry, it's out of form of fear, per se. You have nothing to fear. I'll be peachy fine. And if you don't see me later, well, you, you know that I'm here. Is that all you came in to talk about? Why was it so hard for you last night? In what ways? I've never seen a man react so emotionally to 
fighting another, especially a man, especially you fighting me, really. Did you call what I did a fight? More of a duel, but yes. Could you even call it that? We both agreed to fight. I call that a duel. <clears throat> it's my own worry. Some things sit heavily on me. I'm old, you know? I do. Unpleasant memories. Unpleasant experiences. You'd do well not to worry about them. As a man who holds those same experiences and memories, I can understand. I'll pace myself and we can talk about it some other time. Just know that unlike other people that do that sort of thing, I feel no pride in what I had to do, but I don't regret it. Give Rem a nod and make my way out and find Zex. And yeah, just find Zex again. Okay. Um, while Gil is in the bar, I just kind of want to turn to Zex and say, uh, should I be worried about those two? I don't know if worry is the word I use. I know that they can handle themselves fine, so I would hope that, you know, everything will turn out okay. You know them better than I do. Okay. All right. And so the you guys are lady. heading to the old lady. Um, you can see as you make your way up um, to her. She's not moving. She's sitting in a... She's just sitting in a cross-legged position. Her eyes closed. A set of cards set out before her. As you kind of move closer, you see her eyes open and they are milky white. Like, probably ridden with cataracts. And... Her head, though, although seemingly probably not looking at you, turns towards you. And it feels more like it is looking through you than at you. Through me? It's just, you're, you're getting an eerie sense about it. She's just looking ish at you, towards you. All right. Well, as well, are we up to our stall yet? You've walked up, and it's not a stall. It's a like a a, a purple dominant woven like carpet rug ish thing with small patterns that match the like the cloak that she's wearing as well that's wrapped around her seemingly s blending and bleeding between the two as one almost forms into the other and you've walked up to this does she still have cards laying in front of her she does Whoa, are you a fortune teller of some sort? I am. What would you like to know? Tell me my future. <laughs> I... And she, with one swift motion, her head not moving, sweeps up the cards and seems to start quickly moving them back and forth between her two hands. Almost like she's just rubbing the hands together. It looks very similar to the motion of someone who's trying to warm themselves up. But you see the cards move up and down, turning into like this 
churning mass of cards as she's not breaking where she is looking still the only parts the only part of her moving is her arms and hands which are moving lightning quick i need specifics what do you wish and she pulls out the cards and as her hands are kind of pulled apart the cards themselves seemingly held up through tension stay with her hands Uh, I don't know. Is there any danger in my future? <laughs> she moves the cards around and begins spreading them. And as you look, one of the cards is face up. And it's the image of a, a large stone bricked tower and as you kind of look at it as the card itself is uncovered as the other cards move past it you can see the side of it is broken off and in the process of falling to the ground vines are beginning to like twist their way up and she just puts her hand over the card ah <laughs> there is much that might befall you in the future. You are under the watchful eye of very old power. Power that does not seek the correct path in life for you. It is your job and duty to struggle against this power and not succumb to the higher spirits that wish for your downfall. Protect yourself with those who are new from those who are old. And she pushes it all together in a lump. And as she moves them again with her hands, spreads them out again in a large form, and all of them are face down again. Without moving her head, her hand moves up in an open motion towards you. Oh, I'll give her a couple silver pieces. Okay. The two coins clink in her hand and she feels them with her thumb before placing them behind her. And she says nothing. As you two are just standing nothing. there. Soon, uh, do you want your fortune told? Um, I'd like to wa. Uh, yeah, I'd like to whisper into the old woman's ear. Will I ever find friends? Hmm. As the cards are once again, even as you're leaning to whisper this in her ear, picked up once again, and this twisting, turning, shuffling as she's holding her hands in front of her chest. As she fans it out, you can see the cards opening. You can see a wide array of portraits that are flashed in front of your eyes for a couple seconds and then disappear again as the backs are shown to you. Um... A couple seconds pass, and she lies them out in a fan in front of you. As you watch cards face down, face down, face down, face down, face down. None of them are face up. Oh. As you're still leaning close to her, she takes your hand, places them on the cards. She begins moving your hand across the fan. Not disturbing any of them until the very end where one of them seems to get caught on your thumb and pulled out. And as soon as that happens, before you've even fully comprehended that this has happened, the other hand snatches it up and flicks it over right in front of your face. 
it shows a convoy. Several carts moving through. Um, and you can see a town in the distance, unrecognizable to you. And it looks like the town is alight. Buildings burning. People moving in the opposite direction. You will find those who matter the most to you. In the deepest caverns of their mind. At their lowest point, it will be your duty to assist them back up to the peak of their life. Thank you. I'll hand her a gold piece. She takes it in her left hand, feeling it with her thumb. You see a small smile cross across her face, and she nods and places it behind you, or behind her. <laughs> Is there anything else the two of you are doing? Did you did you find out what you wanted to? I think so. Alright, well there's one more uh oh, let's just wander around a little bit. One more place I wanna check and then we can just wander. I want to head to that guy who had all the metal bits. Mm. As you begin making your way over, Gil exits the mage's mug. Gil, you spot Zex and Suna heading across the square. I'll make my way over to them. All right. And the three of you join up and continue walking over to this booth. It's it's across the square, and you, again, see a lot of these stalls are selling food and drink, and, um, like, th some are selling, like, thick blankets. Some are selling... Um, seasonal clothing. Uh, it, it, it itself is a uh, seemingly a, a a twist on just a large market where beforehand on any given day when you walk through Greywall, it's uh, mostly uh, food that you'd buy to take somewhere else um, as just a, st a standard um, like farmer's market. But in this, it seems to explode with more artisan works. As you guys move, you can see this um, this young, like, scraggly man just kind of pushing through. He looks very young for his age, and no one's really stopped at his place. Um, you can see the, the little bits of metal and pieces just kind of moving out through. As he kind of glances up as he's moving through his merchandise. He sees you and stands up straight and begins brushing off his chest and his hands. And you can see some of the, like like some grease um, smear across the back of his left hand as he tries to wipe it off, gets it on his right, begins to move it on his pants and realize what he's done. And it's eventually as you the three of you approach him, he's just kind of given up <laughs> on what it is. Um putting himself in a properly presentable place for you. Oh, um, good afternoon. Um, is there um, anything I can interest all of you fine folk in? I don't know. Why don't you tell me? Well, um, d d first and foremost, where, where are my uh, manners? My name is um, Zenon. Um, I am... A, uh, a mechanical craftsman um, trying to um, work my way into helping um, the good old-fashioned um, <laughs> the, the gear work its way further into our society. Um, 
And I've thought of what would be the best, the best way possible to do that, then combine it with one of the oldest and most trusted forms um, that, that, that we've been able to um, harness and use for our own purposes of the arcane. Um, for, first and foremost, um, and you, he holds up his left hand, you can see now clearly on it, there's a band across it with a small, like, box-like, um, case of metal around it. This is a, um, fairly useful, uh, tool used for survival, a, um, arcane invention of my own design. Um, I'll, a, a small demonstration is in order, if, if, if you'll all allow me to. Pause it for a second, look in between you three. Well, no. Uh, wonderful. Um, okay, and you see he pulls um, this small, like, wooden log that he places down between you guys and him. He holds the watch very closely, and he kind of reaches it out, and he clicks something, and you hear the whirring of a gear, and this small little streak of flame pops out of it, lands on the log, and begins burning. And you see the smile kind of spread across his face. Uh, <laughs> um, this one um, is, is used to create fires um very very useful for those not intended for the arcane um every um it's 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 easy to use anyone could use it even those of non-arcane nature and all it is is a simple band that straps across your wrist and um it, it, it's 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 very very easy to use very very portable and it's my own design, and I'm, <laughs> I'm very proud of it. I have several of these, and um, uh, I, I've been working on uh, other things similar to it. See, he begins, like, unstrapping the, the band across it. It's very watch-like, now that you guys have gotten close enough to see it. It's very interesting. I appreciate it. Um, I pride myself on making interesting things. Um, this one, and he pulls out another one. This one's like got some silver lining off of it, seemingly to be like um, a type of like either used for style or like a way for him to tell the two apart. He straps that one on, and he um like turns towards the log as he turns it over and pats it out on the um like hard stone brick of the square points this watch towards it clicks it on his wrist and you watch as a small um bit of the log begins to decay and turn into mulch and grass starts to grow from it Whoa. Uh, it, it, it's this is one that was recommended to me by a um charming and short of words fellow that passed through here a while ago um you can use it um to uh do it in in in, in those who are arcane gifted with nature um the the druids that come through here and mostly hail from the forest to the south um, use it to use this kind of magic to make plants and um, just small bits of, of nature pop up where they weren't before and it's it's very useful and this was something that um, someone actually asked me to make uh, I thought it was quite interesting yeah see so unhooks that one and you see the two watches go off um, placed underneath um, besides that, that's uh, mostly what I've been working on. I call myself a bit of a, a, a watchmaker myself. Well, how much are these watches? Uh, yeah, it depends on what you want. Um, e each of them have, 
um, different metals, different enchantments placed into them. Um, they don't run cheap as they are magical, but they're still, I, I still think they're quite fun. Um, what type would you be looking for? I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm gonna direct that at soon and go. I'm I'm not sure. Gil's just gonna just kinda stand there just looking at the watches. Uh, no specific type? No, I was just curious what you were saying. It caught my eye. <clears throat> of, uh, of course. Um, uh, generally, um, depending, they're, they're, they're running about um, 75 gold pieces. Um, it, it takes me time to make them, but I've prepared um, a couple of each um, for this. Um, just seeing how people... Like them. <laughs> um, just kind of awkward. <laughs> Silence begins to spread out between all of you. Very interesting. Uh, I'm not personally interested in that because, well, I'm just not that interested in it. <laughs> hmm. I think uh, it's a cool design, though. Of course. Thank you for the compliments. Yeah. Um, and he looks towards Gilgamesh and Suna. Um, any interest for either of you two? Uh, I think I'll manage without. Of, of course. That is very impressive. Uh, thank you. You, sir. I, I'm assuming he's gesturing towards me. Mm, he's addressing you. Um, I'm just gonna look up and make eye contact and just stare at him. No words. Uh, mm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I hope you all have a, a, a wonderful time today. Um. If you change your mind about your interest, make sure to find me. I'm, I'll be here all day. Mm -hmm. He kind of glances back at you, Gilgamesh, and immediately breaks it again and moves back towards the back of the carpet and begins taking out small instruments and like small uh, like screwdrivers and begins fiddling with a possibly broken watch in the back. <laughs> Does, does Zex notice this happening? I mean, it's right there. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, okay. Is there any place in particular you guys want to go? No, is not there really. one proctoring this race? Ah, uh, yes. In, in the middle of the square. I'd like to talk to this man. Okay. All right. I guess as we start walking away, I want to ask Gil in a joking tone why he's such. You cut out. <laughs> yeah, why he what? <laughs> why Gil was such an ass in a joking tone. Oh. We'll see, we'll see how, what he says. How obvious are you making this tone? Just say what the tone is. Super, say it. super obvious. As obvious as can be. Say it. How. <laughs> Gil, with a little chuckle. We'll throw a little chuckle. Gil, why are you such an ass? I... No words. I'm, I'm just gonna <laughs> stare down Zex the way, the same way I, you know, stared down that guy for a mm. few seconds and just say, uh, I'm talking about that guy back there. Yeah. This man makes watches as a profession. Quite boring. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. Keep walking. Alright. 
as you guys head to the middle, you can see um, there's some of the crowd that has been there, Zex, that you that you would recognize has dispersed. Um, there's still like there's one elven, um, very young looking elven man that's seemingly just there until the race starts. You can see him just kind of warming up, kind of doing stretches along the the. Um, uh, next to the man on the fountain is the man once again is just not standing on the table anymore as he doesn't have that same crowd but still talking to people and gesturing towards this table and you can see covered with a blanket there's some lumps on that table as you take the other two closer to this he sees you Zex and ah welcome back uh, it's a pleasure we're be starting still in uh, takes about an hour for us to get underway but as much time as you want to to prepare to stretch you can see uh donovan over there is is doing the best he can to win and limbering up his body and preparing himself the best he can and you're welcome to join him mm -hmm. cool 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 this is the guy give <laughs> Hello, my quite large dragonborn friends. Uh, would you be interested in participating in the race today? It depends. What is this magical reward you speak of? It is a choice of a magical item that I have underneath this table. It's a wonderful thing that the common folk can hold dear to themselves and 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 cherish and possibly even become a important part of their family's history everyone deserves the chance to have something of the arcane nature in their grasp and i'm here to give it to you So I'm not allowed to know what this oh, item what is. What is it? <laughs> when to find out, my dear friend? How heavy does this this sheet that's over the top of it look? I, it's like a it's like a wool sheet, this like thudded over. The wind that's like blowing, like there's every once in a while a gust of wind that's been going through Greywall. It's not enough to take it away, so it's probably a good. A, a good thickness. It, it, it's obvious that it's a very thick sheet. Um, so, um, I want to cast, uh, oh. I have a good idea. You just, no, Gil, leave it be. Um, I'm going to cast Mage Hand, okay? Okay. Open it. Um, and I'm going to cast it. So, is it like us him and then the table behind him yeah it's it, it's it's the three of you you're in a, a semi-crowded square right now so people are kind of passing through and there's the like good sized table behind him with the large woolen cover over it and then a, a couple like 10 or so paces away there is the um, elven gentleman known as donovan who is still stretching um, and so, um, boo, 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 boo. um, and his back is turned to the table. Yeah. He's addressing you right now. Um, you're so talking to Mage Hand mm -hmm. behind him. Mm hmm. And ever so gently and ever so very slightly I want to lift up the cover just a bit to see if I can see it mm -hmm. and you, this is the I'm trying to t it, this I forgot if your feet allows you to cast it without any components uh, I can tell you <laughs> telekinesis or Or I could use thaumaturgy. <laughs> nah, it's already too late. 
why I was asking. Okay. Telekinetic. Okay. Um, without verbal or somatic components. Okay, and you can make it invisible. Gotcha. Um. So, and and you said there were like small gusts of wind coming in every so often, right? Mm-hmm. I want to try to line this up with that as much as I can, so it seems as natural as it possibly can be. All right. Would like you to make a sleight of hand check with your mage hand. Ooh. Do I get advantage or anything because of the wind? Um, I'll allow, since you're timing with the wind, I'll allow you advantage. Let's go. That's a 17. 17. Is he's still kind of addressing you and you seem to zone out for a second. You focus and as one of the winds pull up, you tug on it. You see it begin shifting behind him. As the cover begins to move up through the table, you're seeing the the it, it kind of pull over on sides of it. Um, it doesn't pull all the way off. Um, yeah. He doesn't seem to, to notice. Um, as as the 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 blanket begins to come like pull upwards you can see uh after a, a quick second as he's uh, excuse me excuse me and then as he turns around oh pulls it over the three of you all make perception checks to see if you see what's in there as he quickly pulls it over well, this man's a con artist, isn't he? It, it, he might be. <laughs> Why can't I? There it is. Perception? I'm pretty sure I can see this. Uh, 12. 12? 28. Oh, I, I 20? can see this. I got a 19. 19. All right. So, as you guys, um, like, you see it for a flash of a second... Uh, Suna, you're able to see shapes. You're able to see a small, like, cube and uh, a longer thing. There are multiple things on this table and small orbs. Um, Zex and Gil, you can see on this table there is, like, a small iron cube. There's, like, a key, uh, a large key. There are um, also two different orbs, one of them green and one of them's like a slight like translucent whitish color as he pulls it over turns around i hope the surprise wasn't ruined for any of you <sighs> um, i real quick i want to look so i just want to look to zex and uh Zuna and, and try okay. my best to like give him a look to like be like did you see that too? A wink. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, okay. Um. <laughs> um. I'll look back to the guy and say, "Uh, no surprise was uh no surprise was ruined. However, little this quote unquote surprise may be." Mm -mm. Well, um, you're still welcome to take part if you want to. Um, it's um, going to happen in about an hour's time, and people will be around here. There will be um, four different total races, and each time they will get their pick of one of those wonderful lumps that you see under this table. I hope to see you there. Of course. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's walk away. Yeah. Let's walk away. Alright, you guys walk away. Once, once we get a good distance away, where this man can hear no conversation, <laughs> um, I'm gonna look at Zex again. 
and just, just straight up ask, do you have any clue what any of that was? No, I could. <laughs> Could you remind me what exactly was under there? It was like a white orb, a blue orb, a white else? orb, a green orb, green orb, um, a like large key, and a thing to note about the key, especially for Uzex, you're able to see this fine of a detail. Uh, the head of the key, where you grab it, is in a question mark. Um, uh, did those? It, it, that's unique about that key that you were able to see. And then Did there those is or yeah look similar to like where's it at oh i think i sold it no i didn't the water elemental gem that i have no okay nope i have no clue if you want i can try and steal it though It might be somewhat hard to steal it with him seemingly quite vigilant. Um, I was going to ask if you wanted to up our chances of winning the race, but I could cause a distraction instead if you'd like. Um, well, so. work on the distraction. <laughs> distraction. Uh, well, I can also, you know, turn invisible. If I get caught, I probably have the best chance of talking my way out of it than any of us. We could combine those efforts. Thought skill? <laughs> uh, I can't quite remember your name, gesturing to Suna. <laughs> um, but what would you think about having a, uh, uh, say, an altercation as a distraction? Um, that wasn't quite what I had in mind, but that might work. Gilly's gonna like slowly draw his great sword. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get away from the first scale. Oh, wait. Uh, I will slowly draw my long sword. <laughs> wait. Okay, I'm gonna. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna start like medium running away from these guys, jogging. All right. Oh my god. As <laughs> you two slowly draw your weapons. The attention is immediate, and you can hear people beginning to like form a crowd. And <laughs> off in the <laughs> slightly off in the distance, you can hear the man just. There are multiple races. Both of you can enter and possibly win. And just from that guy, it's thinking it's about this immediately. <laughs> um, okay, as as soon as I'm like, I don't know, twenty feet, no, nah, thirty feet away from these guys, I want to cast invisibility on myself. All right. Uh, in a way, can I stealth first to try and do it in such a way that this guy doesn't see? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll stealth first. We're going to use the new die and see how it does. Well, not terrible, I guess. So, 26? 26, as you just kind of slip between some stalls and group of people who are looking over to these two. And turn invisible yes all right as you two kind of move forward gil suna what are you guys doing <laughs> um so this might be uh uh i guess a touch out there but could i say something along the lines of like how many blows do you think you can take like before I, before I end you, and roll deception to like make people think that we're, we don't know each other, and we're just gonna like just straight up fight. Roll performance. Performance. Okay. Because I performance because I have to catch on. <laughs> you guys need to 
Just say what you're gonna say. You don't have to ask me for rolls. I'll ask you for rolls. Oh, I got a 17 on my performance. All right, as people are beginning to form this circle around you guys. Um, I'm just gonna give like Suna a nod, just like you ready. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna cast Eldritch Blast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. As soon as this Eldritch Blast goes off, I'm gonna start moving towards the table. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, roll. This is a great plan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, roll to attack, Suna. All right. <laughs> oh, um. God. Oh, I gotta help. <laughs> so my first one is a nat 20. Okay. <laughs> definitely oh. hits. Oh, no. And my second one is a 21. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Roll damage. Oh, and I double the first one, right? Yeah. All right. Where is another? There we go. All right. Okay. Uh, so ten total. Ten total. Uh, yeah. Okay. As the two green bolts slam into your chest, Gil, it kind of takes you back a little bit. Since <laughs> you kind of, kind of slide backwards across this, you can hear people shout out, "There's a fight! There's a fight!" People moving closer, packing in. And Zex, as you move closer, you can see uh, the man himself not taking part in this um, is just kind of kind of standing back a little bit horrified. <laughs> does, this, does that mean my turn? Keep going, now? you guys. You do what you do. Okay, here we go. How close am I to the table? Uh, you moved, you could probably get up to the table right now. Okay. Does anyone seem to notice me? Roll a perception check. Seventeen. Seventeen. Um, as of right now, no, it looks like everyone's kind of caught up in that fight. Okay, I want to, how far down does the like cloth hang um off the edge of the table he's pulled it so it's pretty much to the bottom i want to go under the table okay gilgamesh do i need to roll like sleight of hand or anything to make it not seem that apparent um <laughs> <laughs> i will have you roll sleight of hand you have advantage because okay. you're invisible Twenty-four. Twenty-four. As you slip underneath, it barely moves. Probably the wind. <laughs> <laughs> as all of this happens, um, Gilgamesh, what are you doing? Um, I, I, I take the blow, and I'm gonna walk up to him and take some swings. Okay. Oh, this is this is the one time I don't want to roll high. <laughs> Twenty six total to hit. Pretty sure that hits. Yeah. Yeah. I think I even if I cast shield as a reaction, it's not gonna do me any good. Oh no. Okay. 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 Um. It's only seven damage. Oh, that's not bad. Now, hmm. Hmm. how much do I want to sell this? 
Do people seem to be like really excited, like super into this? It's a it's a brawl, man. Like people are people are crowding around you. You have a, a good circle. Like the diameter of how you guys are fighting are about as big as the fountain. Oh wow! wow. All right. Um, I you know I'm gonna I'm gonna just just for a bit of show I'm gonna take my extra attack as well. Okay. That's, a mile uh, it's across. not a mile across. <laughs> The fountain no, no. is exaggerated in size. Can't do anything with you guys. Uh, I got a 23 total. 23. <laughs> Does it hit? That hit. Can right. he that choose hit. not to hit? You can. You can choose to miss. But it's more interesting this way. Up to you. It is quite literally up to you. I'm, I'm rolling low on my damage, so that's good. That's a lie. I'm no longer rolling low on my damage. Um, that's a that's a ten total. All right. I and I guess I should have prefaced this before. It's fine. <laughs> Continue. Continue. As you strike across, this across, yeah, yeah, and just kind of going around and. <laughs> Um, you just generally see just some people are into it. Some people are just kind of moving away and out of the way. Um, Tuna, are you doing anything now? Um, I guess with all these people here, I can't really see what, or Anzax is invisible. I can't really see how well he's doing. Mm hmm. Um, I guess I'll take a swing with my long sword with both hands. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that's a thirteen hit. No. All right. Um, wait. Was this with your sword or an Eldritch Blast? Uh, that was with my long sword. Okay, as clangs off of the great sword's blade. Yeah, we'll play this up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> right, I'm gonna use quicken spell. Okay. And I'm gonna shoot another two uh, bolts of Eldritch Blast. Okay. <laughs> Roll to hit. <laughs> The first one is a dirty 20. God damn. Yeah, that hits. The second is a 22. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry. Uh, just a 7 total. No. Just Eldritch Blast doesn't like great for damage. It very up close to blast force into your your chest again <laughs> slightly pushed back Zex uh, so I want to reach up under the cloth and just grab something do I remember how many like items were on the table there's four four okay I want to grab at stuff then okay make a sleight of hand four. check mm. 21 21 all right, you reach up and you feel a small cube. You pull it down and you have the cube in your hand. Into the bag of folding. <laughs> I can't try again because we're doing turns, yep. right? That's all you can do. Okay, that's all I do then. All right, Gilgamesh. Um. nothing special to it i'm just gonna take some more swings all right um but could i theoretically because you said i could intentionally m miss these right yeah uh could i like more or less like aim for a sword so he it looks like he's parried it okay thing yeah 
Alright. <laughs> Roll to hit. Fifteen? Fifteen. Is uh, that... No. That doesn't beat your AC? Nope. So it's a thing of moving up to it and you see it sooner and push it up and it ching, rings against the sword, but it's not a lot of movement. Um, is that all you're doing? I'm going to take my second attack. All right. Oh, 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 that's a 25. That beats my AC. Yeah, it does. <laughs> are you hitting her or are you hitting the sword? Uh, no, I'm, I'm still going to aim for the sword. All right, and so like, this thing of... super, like, obviously, though. This time, it's a, it's a thing of you swing up with the first one. She brings it up seeing this one. The other one, you just lightning fast put it in a reverse to go upwards like an uppercut and it slams a sword. Suna, you barely retain your grip on it with one hand and it staggers you backwards a little bit. Um, um okay. Yeah. And at this point, I'd like both of you to make perception checks. Oh, there's one massive oversight with this plan. Oh, God. Oh, uh, no. I five for perception. Okay. Oh no! Oh, I didn't realize. Oh no! <laughs> oh, and I got a nine. Oh, we. Oh no! If this is what is, if this is what I think it is, we're. Oh, I bet it's Rem walking out of the tavern. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking. I think, I'm thinking of worse right now. What are you thinking of? You know how there's a government, right? Mm-hmm. Usually governments have law enforcement. What, what's law enforcement? I didn't, I didn't think about this. What's your role for perception? This. I got a nine. Yeah. Oh, you guys don't hear well. anything. It rings loud in your ears. Um, oh, no. Suna, it's your turn. Oh, um, God. I... Oh, okay, how do I want to do this? Um, so as Gil, as I like kind of parry that last attack, I want to drop my, like kind of fake drop my sword. Mm -hmm. And I want to cast, I'm going to risk the wild magic. I'm going to cast fog cloud centered on me. Oh, okay. Right, is this, is, are we war crime? Roll your, roll your D20. Oh, I got a 10. Okay. As, as you press your hands together, this large fog cloud um, encapsulates everyone. Your vision is now basically nothing. Anything else you're doing, oh, yeah. Suna? I want to try to integrate in with the crowd. Yeah, it's 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 big enough to get... It basically covers the front of it. It basically covers the entire circle and into the crowd. Okay. I'm going to kind of try to integrate, kind of hide in the crowd a little bit. Okay. As you begin pushing your way in, people notice you're trying to push in. I need you to make a strength check to push your way into the crowd. Just flat strength. Yeah, strength check. Uh, 13. 13. You muscle your way in you begin pushing your way into the crowd um zex it is now your turn going for another thing i love how we just have like an unofficial initiative going uh specifically one of the orbs this time okay sleight of hand with disadvantage um Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Okay. Roll a D100. Oh, no. Oh, no. This man is about to get teleported to a different dimension. <laughs> the wild magic fucked me? I don't know. Fuck, I, I dropped one. Fuck, I dropped it again. <laughs> Stop it. 
55. 55. All right. You reach up and grab, and uh, as you pull, you see a small, um, like, uh, the, the green orb. Into the bag of folding. Okay. No, that's that. All right. I would like you to make a perception check. Me? No, Zex. Oh. I see everything. 27. 27. Whoa. Uh, you can hear um, the sound of people, armored individuals pushing their way through crowds. Step aside! Step aside! I I knew it. I fucking knew it. And you, you can hear this general. Uh, things are ramping up out there. Gilgamesh, it is now your turn. I I can't try and leave. You can if you want to. You still have movement. Right. But I'm sure I can't roll sleight of hand to get out, can I? Uh, so it'd another be, check. It, it would... <laughs> to get out stealthily, no, nah, he'll probably notice the blanket going. <laughs> I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll chill. Okay. Gilgamesh. As soon as it claps, like, puts their hands together, <laughs> fog envelops you. Um. <sighs> so. You know how we have those rings, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, once Suna, um, you know, makes this big, uh, big, big cloud, um, I'm gonna, I don't know if it, it would be turning around or what it would be, um, but I'm gonna just, can I, tell which direction the mage's guild is uh it's like mm, roughly make a wisdom check okay can i am i also allowed to make a perception check for the big armor clangy clang or <laughs> sure the <laughs> big armor clang clang <laughs> shut up yes <Yeah, laughs> perception that's a 17. All right. You begin hearing people to the right of you pushing their way through the crowd. Stand aside. Stand aside. Grey Wall God. And people Ooh. beginning to part. Uh, you also can hear the sounds of the of your padded companion pushing into the crowd across from you and beginning to disappear. What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to make that wisdom check to see if I can tell where the Mage's Guild is. Hmm. Nat 20, baby. Nat 20. I, I know everything. It's the way that Suna's heading. Oh. Well, then oh. I'm going to try. Ooh. I can't really blend in with the crowd. Um. What time of day is it right now? Uh, It's like 10 o'clock. It's morning. And the race is in. An two, hour? Two hours? An, An hour. hour. Jesus. <laughs> Um, it doesn't even matter what the race is. We're stealing all the rewards. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I'm gonna click my heels together, <laughs> and then as quickly as I can, I'm going to just bolt all out right. of the way that uh, out the way that soon is going. Really. Okay. Make a strength check to push through the crowd. Wow, did I, did that really, did that, did that really just happen? I got a nine. You got a nine. Oh, as you you're push stuck. into the crowd, it's a wall of, of flesh and you're stuck. Wait, 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 mm -hmm. wait, wait. In theory, okay, yeah. work with me here. Since I do have, since I, am, uh, since I'm, since I'm hasty, right? Uh -huh. I would get a, a a boost of speed when I just kind of launch, wouldn't I? Uh huh. 
Age question mark? Could I get advantage on this check because I am so quick? Because I'm just like busting through people. A wall of momentum. <laughs> you are yeah. really good at explaining advantage this session. I gotta congratulate you on that, and I will give you advantage. <laughs> please, please, this is like the one check I'm good at. What? That's astronomically better. That's a that's a, a sixteen. As oh. you turn into this non-existent before freight train, his people begin falling over, just pushing people aside, <laughs> parting the <laughs> sea of bodies as you begin making your way there. Um, Suna, I assume you're still going. Um, yeah, but I want to do something while I'm moving. Mm -hmm. I would like to use my uh, weapon bond to try to, to summon my sword just kind of low to the ground so mm -hmm. that's a little un harder to notice because uh -huh. it's flying into my hand. Yeah. You are in a crowd now, by the way. Yeah. So casualties may be allowed. <laughs> let's... I so want you... To make a charisma check. To not hit Interest. anyone because you're doing this through a magical mean. Okay. <laughs> Just because chariz charisma is your primary focus. As the sword flies to you, you hear a. Ah! As it <laughs> hits someone. <laughs> slams into your hand and are you still going yeah your style all right let's just keep going all right as you kind of push out of the fog crowd of the fog cloud and then the the crowd itself uh are you going anywhere specific um i need to put the sword away <laughs> okay you sh put away the sword um Can I like? Can I just doing? try to like blend? I just want to blend in with the crowd. All right, make just a become a random person. Stealth or performance check, your choice. Oh. Um, Rem is gonna kick our fucking ass. Uh, I'll go with <laughs> Rem isn't gonna know about this. Okay. Um, items that we just happened to stumble upon. I'll go, Whoa, crazy! I'll go, I'll go performance. <laughs> okay, roll performance. Whoa, that's weird. <laughs> uh, fifteen. Fifteen. All right. As you begin, just kind of pushing your way into a section, standing at a stand, uh, a standing, um, near a stall, and just kind of glancing over your shoulder, um. You feel like you're trying to blend in. Zex, what are you doing? Okay, so I'm still invisible because it's a whole whole ass hour. You're invisible so... and you're under the table. <laughs> I'm going to go for another one. Okay, make a sleight of hand check with disadvantage. Why is it with disadvantage? I don't know. You do know, but <laughs> you won't tell me. Uh, Doesn't matter. 25. 25? With disadvantage, damn! I rolled a 15 and a 14, and I have a plus 11 to sleight of hand. Damn! What the fuck? Bards, what the fuck? All right. Um, as you place your hand up, feel around, you feel the cold crystal. As you drag it over, you have the white orb. In the bag of holding. <laughs> Staying put. Okay, you can hear the shouts of men uh, just kind of um, making their way across, and they're getting closer to the stall, it's, uh, like the, the table. They are? Yeah. How close are they Because it's like generally they're moving towards where the altercation was happening. That's closer to the table. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> they're probably about like 20 feet away. You could guesstimate. Gilgamesh, what are you doing? 
Um, I'm gonna just do my best to keep barreling through and make my way back to the Mages Guild. All right. As you the absolute best I can. As you push your way through, uh, are you using the full hasted? Or are you trying to be stealthy? Ooh, um. Can I tell where the uh, where the royal guard is in relation to me in the direction that I'm going? Make a perception check. Is that a twenty twenty three? Twenty three. Is that what you got? Yeah, twenty three. Twenty three. As you kind of glance by, as you're just moving and moving, uh, you look behind, you can see not only the standard, like, um, like the red and uh, silver of the gray wall armor, you can see the gilded, like, edges of one of the captains of the guard kind of pushing through and looking around. Um... Does this captain happen to look familiar? It does. Uh, he does. Mm. Similar to the mm. one that um, took you guys that in I... at the Halls of Glory. Oh, fuck. This man already hates me. <laughs> oh, this man already hates me. As oh, you are wow. looking, they are looking at the wrong direction. They are still focused on that fog cloud. Um. Then... <laughs> I, I don't want to knock people over, but I do want to just make my way through, like, as best I can. All right. Are you trying to be stealthy or not? That's all I'm asking. <sighs> can I tell how close I am to being out of the crowd? Uh, you've only got a little ways more to actually get out of the crowd, but the square itself is quite large. So is there a way that I could be, like, stealthy through the crowd and then for anything else after just not worry stealthy would be more of like you just kind of walking slowly trying to be inconspicuous and putting as many bodies oh, between God. you and the guard um okay yeah i'll do that okay roll stealth shit uh, i don't 13 13 hmm. okay you just kind of start shuffling fast walking still kind of hasted just moving between just daring like not daring to glance over your shoulder Suna you can see Gil kind of moving his way through the crowd he's not trying to stealth from you so you can see him but you could see him putting bodies between the between him and the guards that are moving through that you now see the gold gilded armor of one of them and the standard red and silver of the other guards moving through um, yeah. Suna, is there anything else you're doing? Um, I'm just gonna keep chilling. Just trying to okay. not, don't, not draw attention to myself. Just look like I was here the entire time. <laughs> and I was not part of the problem. Okay. Um, Zex? Okay. So can I peek out without using my action? your head just kind of slightly peeks out and you can see um, basically it's a fan of four or five guards one of them the familiar uh, gold, red and gold trimmed um, captain of the guard um, kind of scanning looking through they're not looking at the actual booth right now but you can see about five feet away is the um um, is the guy who is heading the race is kind of looking around panicked. Is he looking did is he looking at the table? The you, guy? You see he kind of glances back at it, but he himself doesn't seem to notice you. Okay. So now that I know what side of the table he's on, I'm gonna go for the last item. Okay. Do I need to roll with this advantage again? You, you still do. I rolled a nat 20 and a 10, so 21. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> as you reach up and over, you feel the form of the key as you grab onto it and slide it underneath. And you have all four now. 
I'm um, putting it in the bag of holding, and then from the opposite side of the table from where he's coming from, mm -hmm. as stealthily as I can, because you know I can't stealth. Mm -hmm. So, I want to go out that other side and start making my way towards the mage's guild. All right. Um, you hear behind you this kind of as you begin to running. You all kind of make your way across, and uh, soon. Uh, you being the one left watches eventually the crowd disperses you don't see anyone in custody <laughs> and you get the the view of seeing the man look at the table take a double take walk up to it peek underneath and you just hear oh <laughs> <laughs> As he holds his hands and massages his temple. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, this, this poor man. This poor man. I mean, we stole his shit, but like, this poor man. <laughs> um, I guess I'll just slowly start making my way towards the major skills. Okay. <laughs> um, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> a little while later uh, a couple minutes later uh, 10 15 minutes uh, you guys some of you slowly some of you quickly make your way back to the mages guild Gilgamesh being there first with Zex invisibly coming in next assuming you drop it no, I want to go up to my room before I drop it and then come down the stairs. Okay. As you go up to your room, drop it, and come back downstairs. And then finally, a little bit more, less of a, or I should say less of a hasted pace. Suna. Kind of chilling. As the three of you kind of collect, collect yourselves and each other. I'm going to wink at them. <laughs> I'll wink back. <laughs> I still will have the uh, uh, ever so slightest grin on, on his face. Just very small, very subtle, but it, it it is there. Okay. Why don't you Why don't you guys both well, join me up in my quarters? Might as well. I'll follow the up. Yeah, give him a bit of an art and head up there. Okay, let's go. Right. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, the three of you make your way up to Zex's quarters. You go in, shut the door behind you. Um, and the three of you are now in Zex's quarters. It's a little cramped with the three of you in there, but it's fine. It's bearable, and all of you can't escape this slight giddy feeling that has crept into all of your... <laughs> all of your faces. I got it all. I got it all. I got it all. Oh. So I have a key, a cube, and a white and a green orb, right? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Can I roll arcana checks on all this stuff? Yeah. I want to make sure this man wasn't lying. He seemed pretty shady. Okay. So just four arcana checks? Yeah. Tell me what you're rolling the arcana on. Uh, so I'll start with the white gem, okay. and I rolled an 11. White then gem. Then I'll do the green gem. Okay. Yeah, white gem, rolled an 11. Then I'll do the green gem, uh, 16. Mm. Then I'll do the box, 13. And then I'll do the key, 19. Okay, what was the green one again? Sorry. 11. 11. So... For all of them, except for the green one, you don't even need to find symbols. It automatically, as you grasp it, you feel an inclination. As you grab onto the, um, the white uh, orb, 
You can instantly tell which way is north. Okay. As you grab on to the cube, um, you feel um, a word creep into your consciousness of warmth. The word warmth dances on the tip of your tongue and as you even think it you kind of unconsciously say warmth and you feel the cube get warm in your hands and you feel like a campfire has just been lit in front of you you feel very cozy uh the green one you're not sure you've gotten a slight hum from it but you're not exactly sure and you can't you don't know exactly what's going on with it and then the key as you hold it up it has a slight like arcane nature about it and you're not sure of the exact purpose of it but it is in somewhat arcane okay that's good to know can i tell that the green orb was arcane now that it was magical you have a feeling it might be just because the other three were but this one seems to be set apart and it's not going to give you the magical secrets immediately all right well I'll explain these effects. White orb tells me which way is north. It seems, the the cube, the cube tells gives me warmth when I speak a command word. And uh, I have no idea what the key does other than it's magical. And I assume the green one is magical, but I don't know for sure. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. Who wants the uh, white orb? <laughs> Anyone? No? Someone want the cube? What does the cube do? When you speak a command worm word, it uh, warms you up, it seems. Uh, yeah, I'll take the cube. Okay, the command word is warmth. And I'll hand it over. As you hand the cube over, over you can hear the sound of... <laughs> the sound of armor making its way up the stairs. Oh shit, give it back. I'm going to shove all this stuff in my bag of holding. <clears throat> and then put back. my bag of holding somewhere else. Hide it under my bed or something. Yeah, hearing this, I'm going to just, you know make my way out of the out of the room as if it were you know my room and i was just going about my business okay very I... as you open up the room and step out gilgamesh you see rem oh. a little <laughs> bit more intoxicated than you left him um the the smell is the smell is there um speaking of this uh rem by the way you have gotten to the point where all ability checks will have disadvantage oh shit that's fine and you see rem in the doorway rem as you make your way up you see gil step out of zex's room um, from, from when I, when I smell the alcohol, um, I'm gonna, my, my fists are gonna clench a bit more, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stiffen up. Do I notice this? Make a perception check, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> You're shit-faced a little bit. It's, it's gonna slip right. past my passive perception? Uh, I don't I mean, know. 
This is why I want. Right. I'm just gonna say without the passive. I just want to know because you're doing things a little bit more manually right now. That's my reasoning. Oh shit! We still got an eleven, my guy. Uh, you see this basically Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh kind of stiffen up um, as you approach. Slurring a bit. What's got you so flustered? It's just me. I don't usually take kindly to the smell of alcohol. It disgusts me. It's the only time I've ever seen you act like this before. You didn't act like this in the bar. Insight check. Notice it in the bar. Make an insight Ins check. With disadvantage. With disadvantage. Your boy, I got an 11. Uh, he seems uncomfortable. Um, he is a little bit, as you put it, he's, he's never been so open with it before of being uncomfortable, but he seems honest when he's saying alcohol just makes him uncomfortable. What are you rushing out of his ex's room for? You guys didn't hang out like that before. Um, Is he there with you? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, Suna is as well. We, uh, <sighs> we got our hands on some items that, granted, may not have been done legally, but we have our hands on some items now. You can take a look if you'd like and I'm when you say that you before. acquired items not legally are you saying that you acquired these items from someone else that acquired them illegally or that you yourselves acquired them illegally I have no prior knowledge of where this man acquired said items or how he acquired said items how would you know that we, you said we, and you said equi acquired illegally. So when you say, how do you know they were acquired illegally? And why'd you say we? We all had a, we all had a part in this <laughs> said plan, if you would. So first it was, I have no clue how this man acquired these items. And now it's, we all had a hand in acquiring these items illegally. Mm -hmm. there was a race set <clears throat> for an hour well in an hour and um a man was who 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 had set up the race did have some magical items for the winners of said race <clears throat> we decided that We'd rather not win the race and just quite simply take the items instead. So we did. I'm going to move past him into Zex's room and immediately say oh, the words, no. does this man speak for all of you? I am <laughs> rolling intimidation. You can't Are you intimidate intimidated? Are you, you sound intimidated. <laughs> You can't intimidate other PCs. No. You sound intimidated. I'm not intimidated. I'm swagger and confident, and I will lie my ass off. Um, I don't. I can't say he speaks for me because I don't know what he speaks. Exactly. This man says you acquired some items by stealing them. I didn't steal anything. I don't know what he's talking about. Gil, they say you're a liar. Well, I'm making uh, a whole fuss in the hallway. Gil, they say you're a liar. Well, I would call I, Gil a liar, but like... If I, if I saw correctly, Gil didn't steal anything either. So Wait, first, so first, you, you didn't know, and then it, you didn't steal, and you didn't know what he said, 
because I never told you what he said. I just said, does he speak for you? Does he, did, did, you said you stole some items. So from what I'm gathering is that we all, by we, I mean you three, know what I'm talking about. How, how loud is Rem yelling right now? Incredibly loud. I'm very drunk. <laughs> um, after a, a, a while of, of, of yelling, uh, Gil, just without another word, is just going to go to his room. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very seemingly uh, uh, disturbed and, and upset. As he's walking away, I'm going to stop him and say, I'm not done. I'm in, wait, where? I'm in the hallway right now. I'm like, in yeah. the hallway yelling through this man's door. Oh, okay. Like a parent okay. that doesn't want to walk across your carpet, but knows you did some shit. Look, Rem, you seem... A little drunk. Why don't you just head off to bed, get some get some snooze on. We can talk about this later. No, we're going to talk about it now. Because this man says that you stole and no one seems to know what I'm talking about. When, when I, I think Gil... Me, I'm going I'm to do my best to just push past him, really. <laughs> I okay. think Gil just misspoke. I think so, too. He misspoke an entire conversation? <laughs> yes. That's happened before. Do I do I make it past Rem? Rem, are you like trying to stop Gil from pushing past you? Yes. Make contested strength checks. You're gonna push down your drunk friend. I'm not pushing you down. I'm, pushing I'm trying past to stop you. you, and if I'm moving in your way and you continue to move, you're going to push me down. Why don't you just push him to the side? That's no, true. I'm drunk. I'm not gonna keep my balance. I will fall. It's true. <laughs> Just pick him up and set him down. <laughs> 17. I'm drunk, by the way. And guess what my modifier is in strength? Like a plus one, plus two. Like a, like a nothing. That should be fun. I rolled a four. <laughs> so now you've pushed me on the ground. Um, yeah, and I'm just, without another word, just going to go to my room and close my door. Again, seemingly quite upset. I'm going to stand up. And I'm going to look at Zex. And I'm going to ask one last time. Did you steal something today? I need to give me a sec to consider my response. <laughs> um, <laughs> for legal reasons, <laughs> I will not answer that question at this moment. My lawyer said I can't talk to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go over some things here really quick. Let me walk through how I think this happened. You turned invisible while these two did something. <laughs> because I heard a kerfuffle today, so I'm assuming it was you. And you stole these items from wherever you stole them from. This man's race, correct? I'm just going to stay silent because I told him I'm not talking about it. Let me remind you that over half of the people in this town know Gil's face and know where he goes and know who he interacts with. Don't shit where you sleep. I'm leaving the room. As Rem leaves, Whoa. you and Suna are left. Well, that sure was something. Rem seems to be in a more pissy mood than usual today. Than usual? Yeah. I mean, just the short time I've known him, he's just always pissy. But this is more pissy than usual. Maybe let's wait for him to sleep off the alcohol and figure some shit out later. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, well, whatever. Um, so I have a question. Hmm. Does locate object work on items that are in a bag of holding? Um, Since it's technically like divination and stuff like scry doesn't work on objects that are in a bag of holding or, so, you know, that kind of thing. Lo um, it is... It's a it's a thing is it can't um if the object is within a thousand feet is how locate object works. Right, but a bag of holding is like an extra dimensional. Yeah, space. it's it's a thing of um it doesn't really count as being within a thousand feet on a different plane. So the answer is no. The answer is. Probably not. Yeah. I'm going to tell soon. For now, I'm just going to leave the items in my bag of holding. We'll sort this out later. Sounds good. <clears throat> That's okay. And, um... Yeah, I think I'll head to my room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what time is it? Uh, it's like 10.30. <laughs> 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 we called some shit real early in the morning, didn't we? It's like 10.30, yeah. Um, I'm going to sit in my room for about an hour. Mm -hmm. And I want to come down and I want to knock. I want to invite Gil and Zex uh, to see if they want to go to get some lunch. Okay. Assuming you're gonna knock on my door and ask if I want to go get lunch. Yeah. Um. When I hear the knock, I'm just immediately gonna say, "Go away." Um. Okay. Maybe I'll see you at dinner. I'm gonna go knock on Zex's door. Yep. Hello. Uh, do you want to go get some lunch? Ah, uh, sure. What do you want to get? Ah, uh, it's a good question. I don't really know um town very well. Well, from what I understand, there are three taverns, one of which is closed down. Or we can eat here. Um, I just probably just eat here is fine, I guess. All right, we can do that then. You do know a bunch of food stalls have been opened in the square as well. We can have fair food. Let's go get fair food. Uh, are you sure about that? <laughs> oh, I am so sure. I'm so sure. So, Don't you worry about a thing. I said, okay. I, I said I was going to my room, right? Mm-hmm. I never said I was going to bed. Mm-hmm. I'm going said to we were going to bed. <laughs> sit here. Uh, I'm gonna sober up a little bit. Uh huh. And then I'm gonna walk through town and try to figure out what happened. Okay. Make a con save to see if you sober up right now. Like, quickly. Am I doing this with disadvantage? Uh, no, this is just normal. Nope, still drunk. Okay. It's, take, it's taking you a bit to sober up. You can feel that you're not sober right now. I'm gonna walk down to the, uh, the, uh, the mess hall and get some water in me. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're gonna go get fair food. Okay. As you guys make your way out, um, it, it's it make your way back to the square. The uh, square itself is still alive with people. Um, you can, um, as you're going, your eyes can't help but drift over to the fountain where the table was, and you can see that that table and the man are gone. Um, it seems like he has packed up and moved away. 
um, just not there anymore. Um, the stands around are still um, bustling around with different people, and you can see um, different like uh, different fruits and f like frying fish. And um, you can see like lamb's leg and different types of beef that are being seared and cooked over open fires. Uh, you can see different types of like corn themselves being put on these and grilled along with it. And you guys can go through and pick what you want. Are you looking for anything specifically? All the beef sounds really All good. Alright. I know corn dogs don't exist, so I guess just... <laughs> Beef spy <laughs> corn dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, my absolute favorite. Um, as as you uh kind of go, you can see ro this this large portly man kind of balding on the top. Just these large skewers of meat and vegetables, uh, kind of roasting as you. You guys are drawn over there from the scent. Um, as uh, he tells you, they are two copper piece per skewer. Ooh. Mm -hmm. copper. <laughs> I have loads of copper. I got you covered. I have only gold. <laughs> I have I have like over nine hundred <laughs> copper. You're oh, fine. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, how many skewers do you want? I'll just take one. I'm gonna get three. Okay. So I'll get four in total. Okay. So eight copper pieces are handed over. So he hands you the bouquet-ish thing of skewers as the, they kind of fan out as the meat pushes. You can see dripping with juice. Um, oh. <laughs> you hand one off to Suna. As you guys begin watching, the meat itself is uh very tender and it's you can pull it off of the um wooden skewer with your fingers the vegetables smoked and cooked and easy to eat as you guys still walking through this busy and bustling square um, are there any other see... interesting stalls do i see an abnormal amount of cards um make a perception check Wish me luck. So that means there's not like 40 of them scattered through the entire thing, oh, which is good. Uh, six? Six? No. It's, um... No. It's, it's, a, it's a thing of... You see a couple moving throughout, but they don't seem to be focused on anything specific, and the captain of the guard that was easily identifiable is nowhere to be seen. Seems that's things have calmed that's, down. That's a good sign. Are there any other interesting stalls like that? That guy who was selling the metallic stuff and the lady who was doing fortune tellers or anything else like that? Um, there are so notable things is uh people selling like like um like embroidered blankets uh, as you guys kind of walk past you can see um different like there are religious um tapestries that have been made into this blanket form you see one of the platinum dragon wings spread across um as it's it's as one uh, as well as well as one uh, of the the temple of helm you can see it's actually like an artist's rendition um that's kind of like peeking up as well as one of gray wall itself the large um the, 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 for lack of a better term the large gray wall um standing tall and proud right. another from the inside with the this one seems like a very new one of the airship itself um, the airship station you sees one giant ship beginning to take off in the tapestry. Um, other stalls include... Uh, there's a lot of food here is what you'd expect. There's food, there's ale, there's just people 
enjoying themselves and each other's company. Um, there's also a, uh, you notice that there is a um, kind of open table set aside with these men. Um, there's a, a group of like about three half orcs who are sitting on one side of the table and you can see a, uh, a, 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 a spatter of other people kind of lining up against the table. As you see, you can hear the of something like wood slamming against the table and then people lean in and then a, a chorus of oh! this one man that was sitting opposite the orcs uh, just puts his hand up to his temple leans back shakes his head, stands up and moves on as a, a dwarf hops into the seat rubbing his hands together very eagerly so let's uh, see what's going on over there okay. might as well as you guys move there, you can see uh, closer. Uh, there is a small, like, wooden platter on the central orc, uh, the central half orc, and then the dwarf. As both of them are holding these wooden cups, as they both shake, <laughs> both of them go down. They, uh, you can hear the orc go. Two gold. Dwarf looks at him. Five gold. Orc looks at him. Agreed. <laughs> Opens up and you can see three six-sided dice. The orcs, three, four, five. The dwarfs, two, two, six. As the dwarf goes... Ugh. stands up dishes out five gold pieces puts them on the table and walks away okay so theoretically if I play this game could I use thaumaturgy to make the dice land how I want them to it's possible they might also notice gonna... mm -hmm. thaumaturgy is like a mumbling under your breath kind of thing is what I understand Mm -hmm. There are no other effects besides whatever you're determining to do. Mm -hmm. But so it, it, it's a thing of you're still trying to see whether you're being discreet about it. So uh, would it be stealth or sleight of hand? Actually, it doesn't matter. Sure, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sit down. Sit down. Okay. An orc kind of looks at you. You're willing to play? Oh, yes. Mm. You know the rules. I don't. Wonderful. Let me teach you. I get three dice. You get three dice. We shake. Slam it on the table. Do not pick it up. We wager. Whose point total is higher? We then pick it up. Once we've agreed on the pot, winner takes all. It, so I don't actually see the dice come out, do I? Mm -mm. Ooh, I don't have something like minor illusion, I don't think. Uh, can I, while they're playing, can I see if the orc is using magic at all during the game? Sure. You can stand aside and watch. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess I'll just do it, and I'll try to do it with the thaumaturgy. I'll try and see how it goes, but mm. probably won't work. Uh, uh, sure, sure, sure. Sounds good. I'll try it. All right. First things first. He begins scooping the three dice into his wooden cup, and gestures for you to do the same. I'll do the same. As you both begin shaking the dice, he's just locked eyes with you. <laughs> Slams his on the table. I'll slam mine on the table. All right. All right. So. What's the pot? Three mm. gold. Okay. Three gold. Three gold. Agreed. Agreed. Raising it up. All right. If you have three d sixes on you, please roll them. 
I'm actually rolling. Yes, you That's are. Cool. Actually rolling a dice game and a dice game about a <laughs> dice game while playing I'm a dice so game. Excited. God, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. You got me rolling dice in this game about dice with my dice. I would have never guessed. Never okay, guessed, I did man. it. Okay. I've, I've done it. What'd you get? A five and two threes. Okay. He has a four, a three, and a one. You win. I win. So I get three gold. Congratulations. Would you like to keep playing? Mm. So the answer is no. I can't affect these rolls with thaumaturgy, isn't it? Yeah, no, you can't. Since I'm actually rolling them. I think I'll quit while I'm ahead. Fair enough. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? As people begin to like look and seemingly counting is the from the last two people losing, you've kind of given some people some hope. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Suna, do you want to try? Might as well. Oh. All right. I assume you've heard the rules. Yes. Ah. Then let us play. As he grabs the dice. One, two, three in his cup. And you start doing the same. Slams it down on the ground. Or on the on the wooden platter. I'll allow you to start the betting. Six gold. You see him just ponder for a second. Eight gold. I'm feeling Ten lucky. Gold. Agreed. <laughs> Roll your d6s. A five, a six, and a two. Okay. He rolled a five, a four, and a three. <clears throat> five, six, and four? Is that what you said? Or two? Uh, five, six, and two. Five, six, and two. So, 13, 9, 10, 11, 12. You win by one. <laughs> you see his face kind of scrunch up for a second. Congratulations. Well played. It was a fun game. Of course, would you like to play again? No, I think that's enough fun for today. Completely understandable. Enjoy your winnings, and he pushes ten gold to you. I take it. All right. While this is going on, um, Gilgamesh, hmm. you hear a <laughs> at your door. How how uh, how much late? Like, what's the time between uh, fucking uh, Suna knocking and this knocking? It's probably about half an hour. Give him the same answer, just to go away. Should I open the door myself, then? <clears throat> I said, go away. And I said, should I open the door myself? What's my sobriety level right now? Uh, you've calmed down a little bit. Uh, it's not slurring anymore. You've still got the buzz. You've still got that warm feeling that comes with it. But I'm not making with disadvantage anymore? You're not. You don't? Gillen's gonna stand up and open the door. And just 
look down at Rem. It must be pretty awful to be called a liar by your partners in crime. Does Rem still smell of alcohol, by the way? Um, it's actually not on his breath anymore. Now oh. that I think of it. Okay. Um. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate counter. A ginger ale, perhaps. <laughs> One could uh. even say a ye old body armor. Ye old Gatorade. <laughs> so I'm gonna be what, ignoring what, that. Say what, what you will. You, what did you? What did you? What did you say to me? What the fuck did you say to me? <laughs> I said it must feel awful to be called a liar by your partners in crime. I've been called a liar before. It's nothing new to me. I believe you before I believe them. You want to tell me what happened? Quite simple, really. Me and... I still haven't caught their name. Whoever... Suna? I couldn't tell you if you're right or not. The Whoever only other person that hangs us. around us. Suna. Right. Suna and I. Ah, uh, yes. April's replacement. <laughs> April 2. April number 2. Uh, Suna and I uh, decided to get into a, a sort of altercation, if you would, while Zex worked some uh, intricacies and got some items. I'm assuming during your your uh your altercation the guard was alerted at some point or another yes but none of us are in custody and more or less none of us were seen so well, i have no worry i heard this altercation in the bar there was a crowd around you and you're aware that over half of the town knows your face right i'm very aware so if you get into an altercation with someone, don't kill them based upon your reputation. And some items go missing. Whose door do you think that the guard is going to knock on? Wouldn't be mine. Can I insight check if he genuinely believes this statement? I know you fucking lie. 19. Nope. Gil, Gil is under the stern belief that why the hell would they be knocking on his door when he was just fighting someone and some items go missing? He didn't. He wasn't. He wasn't stealing anything. He was fighting. They're going to assume that you had a hand in it, and they're going to question you. They can question me all they'd like. And they're going to show up to the mages' guild, and they're going to ask everybody who you interact with, and they're going to point out all the magic users that you know. Or anyone that has any form of stealth to them, and then you're gonna drag everybody into it. It sounds like you're assuming this plan was solely mine. I'm assuming that you were the biggest one in the plan and the most recognizable. I'm assuming I'm the... you let that idiot talk you along into doing something that you probably wanted to do but knew that you shouldn't do. I'm the biggest and most recognizable in any situation. So if the police or the guards come knocking on our door tomorrow, you're going to talk them out of it yourself without any anything from me at all. And they're going to believe whatever you tell them. And you're going to say, I was just fighting. I don't know what happened, even though my fighting happened to sync up directly with the robbery in the middle of the town I area. Tell them. some combat and I see no problems with one of your party members that happened to line up with a robbery mm -hmm. 
So if I reach into your pocket and I thing, and I snap my fingers over here, you're gonna tell me that if I told you I didn't take that out of your pocket because I was over here snapping my fingers, you're gonna be like, <laughs> yep, sounds good. In theory, yes, because I didn't see you take anything. Now did I? Yeah. You learned nothing. So you're ready to talk about it, huh? I'm being, yeah, let's talk about it. Have you gotten all of your grievances out with me? Are you, are you pleased with what you've done? You keep trudging on the road you're on. No. As long as our paths coincide, something or another is bound to happen again. For better or for worse. Rem, do you realize where I got this scar? And he's like, I'm gonna gesture to this big ass scar on my face. Was it for me? It was not. So then where did it come from? If you feel it relevant to bring it up. You let me die, Rem. I did. You say that life is sacred and it's something we should cherish, correct? I do. Then I think you'd be happy to hear that for some reason I do agree with you now. Don't mean this is, this is a acceptance for me to blindly follow you. I don't expect any following. I expect you to exhibit some form of common sense. Even despite what happened, don't you think our last altercation with the law would have humbled you out with this kind of activity? And even wasn't your activity. But yet here you are, playing the tough guy, and the tough guy often stands as the fool. Are you going to let them make a fool out of you by letting you take the fall simply because you're the most recognizable? The guard isn't dumb. Are you implying that I am? I'm implying that if you take the fall because of something that the other two talked you into doing, then you are very dumb. All you need to know is I didn't take any items. I have done nothing wrong. And we'll that see. anybody here punished will not be me. All right. I'm going to head off. These guys are beyond my help. We all might not be leaving Greywall together after all. Okay. You leave Gilgamesh's room. You heading back to your room? Yeah, I'm tired. All right. I leave them alone for two hours. Two hours I gave them. Okay. <laughs> Switching back to. Suna and Zex, is there anything else you guys wanted to do? This midday has come and <laughs> begun to leave you. No, not really. All right. I want to go check on my war horse. Okay. Mandibar. <laughs> you head down to um, Gideon's stables, the southern stables. Um, you can see the cart um, of Rem's 
course, is not connected to it. Um, although, uh, you could hear uh, horses moving around in the stables. Uh, it sounds like there's maybe half a dozen moving around right now. Do I see anyone outside? Um, you see a, a young boy. Couldn't be older than 16, 17. Um, just kind of lazily sitting. It seems he's just kind of swinging his feet. But just not paying attention to much. Well, I guess I'm going to go ahead and head into the stables. Uh, as you begin to move into the stables, the, the boy, um, his head does kind of look up. He's, uh, excuse me, sir. Um, uh, can I help you? I'm just coming to check up on my horse. Oh, he pushes himself off of the, of kind of like the, the wooden stool that he was on. Uh, of, of course, um, uh, allow me to escort you through the stables. And kind, All of, right. kind of whisks in front of you and um, sooner if you're going in with Zex yeah, I'll, I'll come in with Zex leads the two of you through and you can see horses normal size um, chestnut and white and spotted and speckled horses and then near the back in a larger um, uh, a, a larger stall you can see the large um, black uh, mane of Mandabar peeking above it is th even the breaths of this horse are deeper than those around him. As he's just kind of moving back and forth and he sees you and you can see um, his head kind of moves and trains on yours for a second, Zex, before seemingly disregarding you and moving to a nearby trough to drink water from. I guess I'll walk up to his stall. Okay. Hello, Mandibar. Can the horse do anything? It's just, this, you know those kind of like the shudders that horses do where like all the muscles just ripple? Mm -hmm. It's just <sighs> And again, you're reminded that this horse is a good bit larger than the others and very, very powerful. Okay. I'll wait for him to finish drinking and see what he does. Yep. As you wait for about 20 seconds, just drinking from this trough, the head with the... Um, the 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 nose just dripping slightly looks towards you you can see just the large black eyes as well looking at you he's not going to come over towards me is he he's going to uh, stand there he's <laughs> just he's just kind of he's okay. just kind of standing there staring at you yeah well, the stable boy if he has any like apples or anything that I can give him <laughs> Uh, of of course. Um, uh, you see, he moves over to um, an empty stable. Um, you can actually see there's a, a chestnut horse kind of craning its head, half looking, half seeming to like look in your guys' directions, half going towards the bag. Uh, and you can see the uh, stable boy's go, shoo, shoo, it's not yours. And, opens up this leather bag and pulls out um a like a green apple and closes the top uh, here you go sir and hands it to you I'll, I'll take it and I'll hold it out for Mandibar make an animal handling check Eighteen. Eighteen. As you hold the apple out, um, you can see he's still <laughs> looking at you. He's kind of trots over the 
powerful legs uh, indenting in the dirt floor of the stable. Um, as he kind of pauses near your hand, is mouth enough to fully envelop your your hand in itself with the apple? And for a second, with the pausing, you're a little, uh, and then slowly takes the top of the apple off. Hear the sound of it, him munching on the apple, leaving the bottom half still in your palm. I'll continue to hold it out and hope he doesn't bite my hand off. (laughs) See, takes a couple seconds, and then surprisingly gracefully, as this is a massive, very powerful horse, takes the bottom half of the apple and crunches it. Few pats. I'll see you later, buddy. And then I guess it's time to go. Still kind of munching. His head kind of stays near the front of his stall, and you can f- almost feel him watching you as you leave. Very well, sir. Uh, Is there anything else you need? Uh, Not at this moment. Very well. Uh, You have a wonderful day. You too. I'm going to give him, like, five copper pieces, I guess. Uh, Thank you, sir. Of course. You guys head back up to the square. Anything else in particular any of you want to do with the day? There's a uh, little bit wanna, less than half the day left, to be honest. Uh, I guess I'll head back. Uh, is there anything you want to do, Suna? Uh, no, it's not that I need to do today. All right, well, then we can probably head back to the Mages Guild. All right. And you all head back to the Mages Guild. Um, Gilgamesh, Rem... Suna and Zex, you've all converged. And um, through the rest of the day, um, there's not a lot. Um, are you guys just going up to your rooms and spending the rest of the day there? Are you spending them down in the main area? Anything? I'll probably just hang out in the main area. All right. Zex? So I have, I have these cartographers tools. Mm. Um, I want to practice with them. Okay. As you spread it out on uh, one of the tables and begin, uh, anything specific you want to do or is it just practicing? Uh, I want to pull out my map of Paplios and start like attempting to copy it. Okay. I'm trying to teach myself how to make maps. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a thing of you're kind of moving and tracing and seeing how close you can get to it and then uh, working on scale and doing things like that. Um, the... I'm going to say make a intelligence check. Intelligence? Okay. Mm. 15. 15. Um, You're working... uh, The tracing part comes pretty easily to you. Uh, It's working on the scale. So... Whenever you want to change it up a bit, you're you're good at tracing the coastline. You're good at doing that. But when you want to downsize or make it bigger, some problems arise. But it's good practice, and it uses up the hours. Um, as you guys um, spend your time there, uh, people return from doing things in their day to day. Thing of note. Zex, you see Lixen come through the door. Um, a large, thick book that he's reading as he um, kind of his, his face just kind of buried in it moves up, going towards his room. 
a little while later you see um Kor the dwarven cleric from the fighters guild make his way in slowly moving um looks around seemingly looking for something doesn't seem to find it and leaves um and then you see um Darren come in from the fighters guild as well his arm um not as wrapped anymore but he still seems to be being like tender with it um a little couple minutes after him uh you see Jaylene enter in wearing this um thin gray cloak pushing it off and um kind of wrapping it up um she looks at you smiles looks at Suna and smiles and heads over to her um reception desk and begins working on something and so the hours go past the day begins to draw to a close last chance for anyone to do anything yes as the day is drawing to a close i want to put spells in my ring and spell storing okay um i want to put <laughs> a call lightning mm -hmm. and a shatter okay at their respective third and second levels then that is correct okay good to know anything else the rest of you would like to do speak now or forever go to bed for the day. Forever go to bed. I was going to say forever go to bed means die. For the day. <laughs> I added it on to the end. Bedtime. 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 Sleepy time. Uh, <laughs> you guys um, move in eventually. Uh, Zex and Suna, you guys retire as well. Um, uh, are one of you staying up? more than the other or both of you retiring at about the same time go to bed at the same time I guess yeah alright so you just um kind of make your way in and I'm sleeping under my bed again okay <laughs> good to know um as everyone is bedding down for the night um as I assume Gil and Rem went to bed a little bit before the other two. Mm -hmm. All right. With you all going to bed, Gil and Rem with disadvantage, I would like the four of you to make perception checks. I knew it. Oh, the bed God. is the best place underneath. <laughs> perception, you said? Perception. I'm sorry, Gil's a little too big to fit under the bed. Eight. Eight. Seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Even with disadvantage, I got a, what is it, a thirteen. Thirteen. Not bad. However, Suna, as you yes. are settling down, maybe an hour has passed. You don't know. Time kind of flies when you're trying to go to bed. In that weird half awake, half asleep wonderland, you can hear the creak of a floorboard outside in the hallway. Um, 17 wasn't good enough to hear that? It was not. Only oh, wow. Suna heard it i'm gonna stay awake and kind of listen just a little bit more mm -hmm. but i'm maybe kind of sit up in the bed mm -hmm. but i don't want to look as you sit up in the bed the creaking sound stops 10 seconds pass 20 
30 seconds later you hear start again slowly it's the sound of padded footsteps moving down the hall towards the staircase towards the staircase mm mm-hmm. Are you doing anything? I'm not going to do anything. Okay. The footsteps eventually vanish. That's a ram leaving, isn't it? And you guys find sleep. You all gain the benefits of a long rest. And Rem and Gil, since you guys actually went to bed, if you want to, you two will be the first to wake up next morning. Sure. All right. I'm gonna get up and read. Okay. What are you What are you reading? <clears throat> I still have the uh, bestiary from Robot uh, Library. Mm. Huckleberry Finn. Huckleberry Finn. Um. Okay. And you pull it open, doing light reading. Rem, you've uh, slept off your intoxication. You're feeling a lot more sound of mind. If there's anything you guys would like to do, let me know. And if not, we'll fast forward to when the other two wake up. So I just want to remind you real quick that I had a glyph of warding on my door Mm -hmm. from the way back when. So if someone tried to enter my room, that shit went off. Mm -hmm. I know. Okay. Just wanted, I didn't know. (laughs) This was a really long time ago. Don't worry. This my area out of place, right? No, doesn't seem to be. All right. Alright then, I'm uh, going down to have a lunch. Breakfast. Breakfast. Lunch. Okay. As you um, kind of uh, make your way down, uh, people sitting at the table, you can see uh, Darren and uh, Tara sitting at the table. Um, Both kind of quietly eating. Uh, Darren just kind of mumbling, kind of talking to Tara. Tara nodding. Uh, she looks at you and raises her hand in kind of a like, half wave. Ah, okay. Like oh, the acknowledgement. I'll uh, half wave back and then I'm going to. Uh, how do I get food? I have to have Jaylee get me food, right? <laughs> Normally I'm you gonna, sit down go- and then um, the half elven man comes out and. Ask you what you want. You get ordered. All right, I'm gonna sit down and wait for him to come take my order. He does come out. Um, it's, it's, it's you've you kind of gotten used to this um, thing. It's a it's a pretty easy, quick and quick and easy place. Uh, uh, as as you order your food, um, he nods, walks away. Um, and uh well you're waiting for something to uh, occur someone to come out um you see um it's it's a second of like Tara's standing up pushes away from the table um kind of neatly organizes her plate and dishware um Pushes her chair in, nods to Darren, um, looks over at you for a second, and walks out. Why is she looking at me like that, Tom? Don't know. All right. I mean, if you want to make an insight check, you can. Why is she looking at me like that, though? <laughs> Dirty 20. She just looking at me. Yeah, it just seems like mild interest. Just, oh, yeah, someone else is here. Here goes the unhinged mini man again, <laughs> screaming his lights out. Uh, as this all goes, eventually you're served. Uh, Zex and Suna, you two uh, are awake now as well. 
Um, I'll head down to breakfast. Okay. Down to breakfast. And you see Rem eating at a table and Darren eating at another table. I'm going to go sit down with Rem. Okay. I'll follow suit. As they're sitting down at my table, I'm going to look at them, get up, and then move to another table. <laughs> okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up and follow him. <laughs> I am not going to follow. Okay. Is there something I can help you with, Thief? Really? Is there something I can help you with, Thief? Why are you calling me a thief? I know what you did. I'm not Who dumb, now? but apparently you are. Go sit over there with your friend. I'm not interested. Why can't I sit over here with you? Because I don't fraternize with thieves. Why, why can't I sit over here with you? I said what I said. I'm not going to move. I'm just going to throw my lunch away and leave. And if you follow me, I'll hurt you. As I'm walking away, I'm going to let him know. We've never done anything like that before, so I don't know what made you think it was okay. I don't live like that. Since when do we live like that? All this time, and we do things like that now? Disgusting. And then I'm leaving. You walking up to your room or are you walking out? I'm walking out. I'm going to I'm going to see bears. Okay. Zexy, you and Sunar are left with Darren in there. Uh, so I'm not going to follow Zex. I want to go out and see if I can find this dude who we took this stuff from before. Okay. Funny enough, I have to mention, even though it's breaking the story flow, you called <laughs> Rem Zex yourself. I caught it. Wait, and I'm, very, I'm very happy about it. You said, I'm what not going to I'm not gonna follow Zex. I'm not going to follow Rem. <laughs> Damn. I had to comment on it because you guys make fun of me for Don't when I did it. Don't even know your own name, my guy. <laughs> I had to comment Shut on up. it. Is... You really want to do that? You said, you said earlier in the stream. I have to pull it up. He looks very young for his age. Yes. Yes, it does. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> as you <laughs> leave, uh, uh, soon as you see first Rem get up and move, and then Zex. Stands up without ordering anything and begins to leave. Well, then. Pretty soon, uh. <laughs> then I guess I'll order food. Alright. As it comes and you order your breakfast, um, as the server, as he leaves, Darren actually moves and sits next to you. Uh, hello. Hello. Um. So I. <clears throat> um, um. I'm not. My memory's not the best. Um. If we've already met, sorry, but if we haven't, my name's Darren. Um, I'm not sure if we've met yet. Uh, my name's Suna. Nice to meet you. He holds out his right hand to shake it. Shake his hand. Um, I'm not meaning to be nosy. Um, I really only know Gil between all of you. Um, However, although I don't know all of you personally, I do kind of know of their reputation, what they've done, all that, and I was going to talk to Gil, but I haven't seen him come down um, this morning. Um, it seems like a bad time to ask for a favor. 
do you think I, I should, I, I needed to talk to them about something and do you think it'd be better for me to wait until it stops boiling over? Um, I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but yeah, it's probably better to wait. Okay. Um, right. Well, nice to meet you, Suna. Nice to meet you, too. Um, <laughs> they're, um, They're well-meaning, I think. Uh, they're just passionately loud. That's all. They're all pretty loud. The short time I've, the short time I've been with them, I'd have to agree. Oh. It's a. Uh, there's not a lot you can say about someone who you've barely had a conversation with, but still willing to help keep your pulse going. Um, so they're, I'm inclined to think that they're, they're good. <laughs> um, wouldn't do a lot to let you know it though, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick around here. Um, if you see them not yelling at each other, uh, would you mind sending them my way? I can certainly do that. <laughs> Thanks. If I ever catch them not yelling at each other. It's appreciated. Uh, I have <laughs> something to talk about with them is all. Um, Alright, so you have a good rest of your morning. Thank you, you too. He stands up and moves uh, back to his table and sits down and rubs his arm. Alright. Rem, you're moving to Barris? Yeah. Yeah? Alright, as you move across, you can see people are still kind of celebrating although it's a little bit toned down it's kind of like the amount of people that were moving through the square is only like two-thirds of the density easy enough for you to make your way through and um eventually uh you make the trek over to the spectral allies as you kind of step through the door uh you can see the form of Barris, her back turned to you, um, kind of seemingly like reading through something that she has uh, pinned up on the wall. And you can kind of see her uh, ears twitch as you step through the door and she turns. Welcome. Pleasure to see you, Rem. Oh, pleasure to be out of bed today. <laughs> Um, what may I do for you? I, uh... I spoke with you briefly when I was up at Formout. Mm-hmm. I remember. I, I thought you'd like to know what I discovered. The thought had crossed my mind, but... I'm sure you've wanted to take a load off for a couple of days, so... I had no problem being patient. Uh, I could tell you out here, but I'd prefer to do this privately. Mm -hmm. Are you waiting for any of your uh, friends to show up? I'm not speaking with them right now. I see. All right. Contrary to my looks, I'm rather old, Ferris. <laughs> and they're all so young and stupid, I don't know what to do about it. 
Well, I'm not too young myself, and people learn things at different years. Some take one, some take a thousand. Everyone learns at their own pace, and some people's pace is horrifyingly slow. However, we must do the best we can and be as patient as we're willing to be. Anyway, and she snaps and you can feel the arcane spell ripple from her hand as the door, which is left slightly ajar from when you kind of push through it, closes and you hear it. What would you like to talk to me about? You told me not to spend too much time in Formount. What mm. made you say that? Formount is a deceptive place. Have you met the Lord of that city? For better or for worse, yes. The fact that you're using that language when referring to him tells me you may know a little bit of what I suspect. The man is, on the surface, very likable, albeit cold. However, his regime, his practice, was concerning. At the end of the day, I am a private citizen and don't hold too much sway with the king. However, the concerns I hold um, come from the fact that not a lot of people travel from Four Mount. Most people who do are soldiers or nobles from that city. Um, you don't get young blood like the boy Darren. Um, you don't get those people traveling. Uh, you get people that come to other cities, say everything's fine, and then return. And I personally see it as unsettling. This has been going on for about two decades. If it happened gradually, I would have just thought it was a new system coming into play that someone thought was more efficient, but was, in my opinion, barbaric. However, the change was immediate. At the mark of him being even considered for power, for Mount started becoming more reclusive, more military-centric, and just in general more off. I've had one person go to Formount. Um, there was a arcane dealer that used to live there. I can only hope to use lived because my runner that I sent, I never heard back from besides a letter that said that he had decided to permanently reside there and apologized and returned my money. I don't like it. Have I lost you, Rem? No, I'm here. 
Uh, Varys, you know that... I'm sure you know what I am. Everyone in town at this point probably knows what I am. You're a symbol of your god of choice, of course. Dealing especially with the undead. And I don't know if you know about people that find themselves on that path in life, but, and I'm going to point to my eyes, we happen to notice things others might not. Mm. My advice to you is stay as far away as you can and don't send anybody else because it looks like a man, but I give you my guarantee that it's not. And he's worse than a barbarian. He's... civilized, but not human. I'd go so far as to say less than human. The man's not even living. You're sure? He's a corpse that masquerades as a person. I can't tell you what kind, but I know what I know. My goddess doesn't lie. You're sure of this? I'm certain enough to that I am apprehensive to never go back. And it is something that I have kept to myself. I haven't told the others, because if I told them, they'd see it as a challenge. And I know better than anyone else that an undead that shows any form of tele intelligence is not to be trifled with. Hmm. I met some of their citizenry, one in particular, who was a, a blacksmith was almost empty, sullen, malnourished. And whenever I asked him a question, he says, you need permission from the Lord and nothing further. <sighs> Beyond the regime that you're saying, whatever it is is sucking the life out of these people. The streets are empty. The wheat grows, but there are no animals. Silent birds, nothing more. I just didn't trust the Lord of Four Mounts. This is much worse. I tell you this in confidence, hoping that you'll send no one else that way ever again until it can be dealt with. Concern is how would something like that even be dealt with? The undead are my specialty, you know, but I can't do it alone. As it stands with my party members, I may never be able to do it. What do you know of the local lord here? The royals. The royals? I, know, I don't even know their names. I just know that they're aware of who I am. Well, the royal family of Greywall, um, they're very hands-off with the rest of the cities, allowing them to govern themselves through a lord and offering counsel when asked. They most likely won't help. They'd have to be convinced, and they do not know you as I do. Granted, it's... It'd be tough, even if they did believe you. The... Royals, from what I know right now, um, would mostly defer to, as of the moment even, the ambassadors within Greywall. Um, and in my experience, you've had nothing but negative relations with them. They were the ones that were the, or at least some of them probably, at the very least one, were on the council that tried two of your members. 
believe I met one of them. What was her name? I believe she she was an Asimar, right? Out of character? Mm, yes, she was. I remember an Asimar woman, but her name eludes me at the moment. It was so long ago. Mm. Um, Salvin. She is the um, ambassador of Greywall, and she is mostly in charge of the court. So it would make sense that you would have met her in that adventure. However, I don't think that you'll be able to get much help from the nobles. I don't have much influence myself. I am simply a contact for them. Little more. Truth be told, I didn't expect to get much help from them when I saw the state they left for me, no sin. For Minos was a tricky business for them. I fear the army they sent never arrived. What happened? I don't know. I don't have any access to what they're doing. I don't even know, truly, if they went to Forminos. It might have just been a cover. There might have been something else up north. Writing notes, give me a moment. <laughs> It makes me apprehensive to let the captain there know this. The captain of the Greywall God. The captain of Forminos. Mm. That they've been sending soldiers? I told them that they were sending soldiers because I was here the day that they left. But oddly enough, I made it there before the soldiers did. And the entire time that I spent there, only the soldiers of Gondola never showed up. An entirely different troop. That's where I spent all my time, keeping their soldiers alive while we fought off giants and hobgoblins. A noble undertaking, for sure. Would you believe they have no healers there? Not a single one. <sighs> they are grossly unequipped. I know that they used to have some. Um, clerics like you sanctioned under the Church of Bahamut. I wouldn't know, though, what happened to them. The captain told me the Church of Bahamut didn't condone in their cause, and the entire church was abandoned. Hmm. The only reason I ever ended up going to Format was to deliver a letter for the captain of the guard. That's the only reason I know what I know. Of course. Well, it's good that, at the very least, you made it out without any issues. And as it stands, you're the only person I know um, that traveled to Four Mount and came back. When I was dealing with some business towards Lichten, I'm sure you heard word of the people disappearing there. We mm. also dealt with that. It happened to be some cultists of sorts. And I'm going to pull the the, uh, the the two medallions mm. that I have and show her and say, I don't expect you to recognize these. I'm learning about it myself, but they were taking people. I don't recognize them. I didn't expect you to. Um, well, at least it's been dealt with. It's... Cults are dangerous when in large quantities, and if they've been 
working since Lichden has had a problem, no doubt they've gathered a fair amount. Things have to grow a certain bit in order to be recognized. It's a um, double-edged sword with them. The larger you get, the more manpower you have, but the harder it is to keep track of every single secret. While I was dealing with that, I came back because I found jewelry that was there mm -hmm. that I brought here to the, jewel the, the jeweler to have him identify it with cross-referencing the missing persons list, mm -hmm. or whoever was missing. Uh, I have eight pieces of jewelry uh, like that I don't know where they go, but I also know that a baker's dozen people went north and never came back. Their families... They were reported, so someone reported them, but they never came back. Mm -hmm. It's to be expected. If a runner won't come back, then I doubt normal people would be able to get back. It's an entire mess. Indeed. I wonder why it is that uh, an entire army that we all saw leave town never made their way. <sighs> and that no one was worried about it. No one's brought it up. Well, not a lot of people know that didn't arrive. I wonder. You know the red dragon that has been spotted north of... Greywall, right? I've heard of it. There is a... reports of a dragon of... not... farmers exaggerate, but of considerable size, as of the reports. Burning crops, stealing cattle, and taking people. If they exaggerated, I'm sure the size of the Greywall force would have been enough to deter it from attacking. Uh, however, if they were heading straight north, they would have gone through the claimed territory. Just throwing out a possibility. You think a single dragon wiped out an armored convoy of 200 men? I would hope not. But I wouldn't know. Dragons are known to be formidable opponents. Especially against those that don't know how to fight them. I wouldn't have any clue on how to fight one. Most of the time, it's suggested you don't. However, um, things I can confirm is the dragon has started to attract other draconic creatures, um, specifically um, wormlings have been seen and spotted. Um, I know a while back, Tyrin was fighting them and went out. Um, but other than that, it's possible. I very much hope they weren't able to be wiped out by a single dragon and some cohorts. When I was heading north, I did run into a group of kobolds and some drakes, but... Hmm. Oh, can't dwell on it too much. We know what we know. And we do what we can. Of course. Thank you for bringing this information to me. I appreciate it. It's good to know, and I truly hope that my business partner made it out. I'm gonna... 
Uh, not gonna do anything. <laughs> Thanks for uh, hearing me out. I know it's probably a shock to hear something like that. It, I was as shocked myself to see it in, in person. It's never expected. But one must be prepared for a lot of things. You just can't expect to see all of it. She snaps her fingers and you feel the magic that was surrounding you all fade and the door unlock. I hope you've had a productive day of business, Rem, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for the chat. I'll probably end up dropping by before if we end or ever end up leaving town again. Well, it's always a pleasure to talk. Hope things work out. Alright. I'll catch you some other time. Alright. As you make your way out, Zex, you move into the square. Um, you're gonna look for the guy? Yeah, I'm gonna look for the guy. Alright. Um... Make a investigation check. Let me know what you get. Uh, so I rolled a nat 20, so the total is 23. <laughs> God damn it. All right. God damn it. <laughs> um... It, it, it's a general uh, thing, and you start in the square and then f make your way out, um, asking people around, and most people have no idea what you're talking about. It's like, oh yeah, I remember the um, the race got cancelled yesterday. He said um, said there were complications and apologized. And eventually, through asking around, takes you a, a good, good while. Um you find your way uh, into the mage's mug where eventually you see a sleek and slick clothed um, <laughs> man sitting alone at a table looking fairly pathetic and you recognize him as the would-be race man. Alright, I'll walk up to him. His happy exterior is non-existent. Non-existent? He's, he's got one hand on the side of his face. His left eye opens and looks at you. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good day hi hello how you doing uh, what do you want so i was wandering around town yesterday and i found some items that i think are yours excuse me mm -hmm. it's not a new cover it's an awful cover what what do you mean? I I mean, I was just wandering around town and I found these items. Do I need to roll deception for this? Yes, you will. That's okay. Even if I, I did not roll terrible at all. <laughs> 29. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, um... Uh, uh, you see his now just palm oh, against the forehead and just um but, uh, w w wonderful um if, if i may inquire what did you find i'll pull out the four the four items that i took from him yesterday and put them on the table you see his eyes kind of droopy just oh my god uh, how did how did you get all of these? I told you I was just wandering around town. I saw them on the side of the street and I picked them up. And you, 
How'd you even know these were mine? So you remember when that wind kicked up the uh, the blanket that was on top of them mm -hmm. when I was over at your stall? Uh, when my friend said we didn't see them, uh, I did catch a glance at them. Didn't want to ruin it for you, though, so we just said, you know, that we didn't see them. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Make a deception check. <laughs> um, Make another one, yeah. Oh. I, I think I'm still okay. 24. Yeah. This is an... This is an... an incredible! Um... Oh. I'm getting too excited. Uh... Oh... Ah... It's... Unspeakable! Uh... Th thank you! Uh... Oh... I have to... Please... <laughs> do the, the races! I can. Oh, you've, you, you, you have no idea how much you've helped me. Uh, you're. <laughs> I, 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 I'm so sorry. I've, I've completely forgotten your name. Please remind me, sir. I don't think I ever actually told you my name, but my name is uh, Zex. Uh, Zex, this is a, this is a miracle. It's. It's unheard of. It's 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 exactly what I needed. Uh, I I don't know what to say. Uh, you uh, you don't have to say anything. I'm glad I could help. Thank you so much. I'm I'm going to put the races on tonight. Uh, before 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 dinner. Uh, it'll give me time to clean things up, get things good, and yeah, and if and if you want uh, a slot in the races, you are the 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 first one who gets a spot. Uh, I think I'm okay, but I will ask my friends to see if they'd like to participate. Uh, of course, I will. Uh, uh, it's 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 um oh. Just, just look for me in the square if you need one of them to sign up, um, and just th thank you, thank you. And you, you see him sloppily just scoop these items. He pulls open a bag of satchel that he has and starts setting them in. I need to get to work. I need to get cleaned up. I need. To, I need. To, I need to go. And just stands up and moves off. Okay. I guess I'll I'll walk out then. All right. And am I leaving at around the same time as Rum? Can I make a perception check to see if I see him? Make a perception check. Seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, the amount of time that it took you to look, although your conversation was much, much shorter than Rem's was, uh, makes them align, and you do see Rem about halfway across, walking back towards the Mage's Guild. I am going to go catch up with him. All right. Rem, as you're making your way through the square, you can hear the sounds of familiar footfalls behind you as eventually Zex catches up and falls into line with you. I'm ignoring him. Okay. I'm just gonna keep walking beside him. Okay. You guys silently walk side by side. Suna, as you are at the Mage's Guild, sitting Darren kind of across um, on a different side of the room, eventually you hear the heavy footfalls of Gilgamesh as he makes his way to the main floor. 
Gil, as you make your way down, you can see Suna, who's finishing up their breakfast, and Darren, who has an empty plate and stuff, and as he sees you, he kind of kind of adjusts in his seat, looking at you, and then pauses, rubs his arm, and doesn't look at you again. I'll just go find myself a table. Okay. Are you sitting with either of them? Um, I'll sit with Suna. All right. Does Suna still have food? That's a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. Good morning, Gil. <clears throat> Morning. Oh, how did you sleep last night? I slept. That's all I can say. That's fair. Where are um, where is X and Rem? Um, they're out in town. Not yeah, no. really sure what they're doing, but naturally, not in the not really agreeing. Hmm. We never really have. If you don't mind me asking, those marks on your face, those weren't there before, were they? They were not, no. To, to put it lightly, if you... If there is a deity or some other being you choose to follow, follow it with caution. Everything doesn't pan out as you think it will. I know you wanted to wait till everybody was here, but considering we can't even get three of us together. What happened on your walk with Rem? If you don't mind me asking. The walk shortly turned into more of a confrontation, if you would. I know, well, I'm at least assuming you do not know anything about the Fighters Guild, do you? I know that one existed at one point, but that's about it. So you're not aware of why one doesn't exist anymore, do you? No. No one really likes to talk about it. It seems. Especially not me. Listen, Suna, the Fighters Guild is in ruins because of my actions. And so Rem felt it appropriate to bring me there, to fight me, to. I suppose, correct me in my actions. And so, that's what he did. Rem got the best of me. And made the decision to let me die. For I don't know how long. I honestly couldn't tell you. And uh, eventually, my deity came around, and <laughs> we uh, we had some choice words, if you would. Um, 
And before I was brought back, you grabbed my face, and that's what this is. Ram killed you and then brought you back? Is that what I'm hearing? He did. Gives me a better idea as to what's been going on. But I couldn't tell you why Rem is having such a visceral reaction to such, but it's the way it goes. Yeah. I'm having a hard time even picking out that he's any different than before, but I guess you and Zax might know him a little bit better than I would. From what I remember, Rem, Rem has had his fair share of drinks, but nothing like this we've all had our disagreements we've all had our qualms with each other but it's gotten worse as time has went on I go a little farther than a little disagreement <sighs> things tend to add up when gone unchecked If you ever need any help or just want to talk, don't feel, don't be afraid to knock on my door. I'm not one for either of those things, but. Welcome. How about you get some breakfast? Sure. I guess I'll like put put my hand up for for a serve. You're <laughs> you are eventually that served. Works. Yeah. Okay. You are eventually served, and soon you can see that, like, Darren is kind of, like, glancing over at the two of you and, like, kind of shifting in his seat, but he's not making a move. Um, eventually, um, Rem and Zex, you two, make your way all the way back to the Mage's Guild, unless if one of you are saying something in silence. I got nothing to say to thieves. <laughs> okay. With the two of you moving <laughs> silently, Zex? Or is it not silent? Not silent. Then say something. It's, I said it is silent. Yeah, silence. Okay. You two move back in. The doors of the Mages Guild open. And the two of you can see Gilgamesh, Suna at one table, Darren at another. Mm. 
you two see Zex and Rem enter. Side by side, but still with tension between the two. Mostly coming from Rem's side at this point, but Zex is still giving it some back. I'll just kind of look up as they walk in and kind of come back to what's happening at the table. Mm -hmm. Is anyone Does doing it anything? Like, does it look like they're still having a conversation at the table? Are they just chilling? What's going on? Um, They're not talking right now. But they're... It's not like an uncomfortable silence between them. Kind of like that slight uncomfortable that you and Rem are having on the walk back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well... I'm going to walk up to the table. I'll say, soon Gil, I need to talk to you in private for a moment. Rem, if you'd like to come with and hear this, I would like it if you would. But if you choose not to, that's your decision. I'm ignoring this and going straight upstairs. Okay. Do, do, I, do I get my food? <laughs> you, <laughs> as, as, as you're just like, uh, food, as food comes out. Can I get my food? <laughs> hmm. so I guess I'll my food up and okay <laughs> well actually you know what actually no the food is gonna be like so wait zex is asking and then i get my food right yeah as zex is like uh, i'd like to talk to you in private the food is being put down i'm gonna look down at the food look up at zex and say is this matter urgent i guess it depends on your definition of urgent down and I'm going to start eating. <laughs> okay. Just sit down with us, Zex. This is more urgent. It's going to get cold by the time I get upstairs. What am I doing? So I'll sit down. Do, do I, hold on, do I notice that uh, uh, Darren is uh, uh, having problems? Make a perception check. And he's a bit antsy. I kind of assumed he was sitting behind you. Um... Uh, you know, my face is plunged too far deep into my food. Uh, I got a total of six. Six. Yeah, no, it's a. You're not noticing. He's just vibing. I'm eating. Mm. Everyone's good. Everyone's good. Except for Rem. Absolutely no problems whatsoever. Nope. So I'm just waiting for Gil to finish his meal. Are you just watching me eat? I'm, I'm staring at you solemnly mm. while you smash face food into your mouth. <laughs> if you feel like you could talk quiet enough, you could just tell us here. Uh, I'd prefer not to do it with Davin around. And wait. Davin did want to talk with you guys. What do you want to talk about, Darren? You see, it's it's almost like he's startled as he's just kind of paying attention. And, uh, um, <clears throat> um, I wanted to talk to you, all four of you, actually, about um, possibly doing something with me. Well, uh, Rem is being yeah, extra that's... pissy right now, so uh, it would probably be... The three of us will have to do. Yeah. Um, I... Just kind of shifting the table across and looks around. I... Know that at the very least, Gil has been to my hometown. Um, I haven't been there in a long time. I was wondering, because call me uh, paranoid, call me anxious, I got a little bit nervous thinking about my old man. 
and my sister. Um, I wanted to pay them a visit. And I was wondering if I could persuade you all to come with me. Well, I personally haven't been there before. Uh, so I wouldn't know. But I am more than willing as long as the others are. I wouldn't mind getting out of Greywall for a little while. Go. I mean, am I still eating? <laughs> you are. I, then I will. I will continue to do so until I finish. <laughs> just <laughs> eating, and he's right. Um, I I don't want you guys to be at odds with um with Rem. I don't want to be the reason for that, so I can hold off until you all talk it out yourselves um just um let me know and I'll start packing myself just in case we'll do where's your room at oh um my room is uh on the right side fourth one um not too far away. I think my room is actually... Oh, yeah, it's, um... It's opposite of Suna's. Alright, awesome. Um... Yeah, uh... Just, um... Just knock on the door. I'll be packing. If you're good, if you're not, I'm not judging either way. I just... I'd want someone to come with me. Of course. We'll let you know as soon as we can. Thank you. Pushes away from the table, stands up, and nods, and walks away. All right. Now that we're alone, I'm going to say this in hushed tones so that no one else can hear. Okay. Okay. I, uh, I returned the items that we took yesterday. Gil is going to slow his eating. <laughs> I figured I would get a reaction out of Gil. <laughs> he's going to slow down to a, to a somewhat... Almost, almost a stop, really. Based upon the tension between you and Ram walking back in, I assume you didn't say anything to him. Um, no. But Ram gave me an earful this morning explain, telling me how wrong it was, and thinking about it, uh, I kind of agreed with him, and my thoughts solidified after returning the objects with uh, how relieved the owner was when I returned them. I don't blame you there. Gil, if you want the items, you can go race. He's going to put them on before dinner. Gil is back to just eating. <laughs> Still. Okay. God, how, much, how much fucking food is there? I, you're almost done. Like, there's not a lot left. It's gotten to the point where it's obvious that you're just like, oh yeah, I'm going to eat the food and then answer stuff. I'm going to use this as mm -hmm. time to think. Oh. I, I'm going to tell you the story that I told him because I did not tell him that we took the stuff. I told him that I was wandering town yesterday and I found them on the side of the road and he seemed to buy it. So if anyone asks, that's that's where they came from. That all being said, I don't know. I don't necessarily have a whole lot of room to say much considering I don't know all of you all that well. But Rem's holier than thou attitude kind of bothers me a little bit. He can be that way sometimes. I don't think he's crossed a line yet, though. Oh no! <laughs> it's time. <laughs> oh no! 
Uh, if it isn't the it's... consequences of my own consequences. <laughs> That's, uh... I guess I wouldn't know. I'm gonna just kind of, I'm just gonna kind of look at Gil, see if, <laughs> if does, if he does anything. Pens, it's done eating yet? Yes, you're finishing <laughs> up. Okay. Um. Once I'm done, I'm just gonna, you know, put my silverware down, and say. I'll go talk to Rem about Darren's uh, request. Uh, I get up from I'm the table. Go, well, I'm going with you. And leave. All right. Do, do I notice that Zex following me? Yeah, Zex is following you. He's not trying to hide it. Once I get to the top of the stairs, I'm going to turn around and say, Zex, I don't know if you've noticed, but Rem. Hmm, isn't taking too kindly to you right now. That's if perfectly you want fine. This to be done. Maybe I should be the one to talk with him. Don't you think? I'm gonna go to the bottom of the stairs. Right. Um, well, yeah. and I just want to say, call up, like, hey, Zach, you come talk with me for a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be down there in a sec. Gil. When you talk to him, let him know that the objects were returned, because I did not tell him yet. That is your own problem. None of mine. I will let Rem know what I feel Rem needs to know. You can let him know what you feel he needs to know. How am I going to do that if you won't let me come talk to him? You had time to do it, didn't you? You walked with him from wherever he was to here. You chose Cause... not to. Obviously, you want to know why? Wasn't that important? It was very important, but I didn't want to say it out on a public road and admit to stealing this stuff. That seems like a problem that you need to deal with, not me. No way, Gil. Fuck you. I'll turn around and I'll go back down the stairs. <laughs> I will continue to Rem's room. Rem the give me your knock knock. Come on in. I will make my way into Rem's room. Rem. Yes. Darren is requesting that we accompany him back to Foremount to visit his family. Foremount, right? Not Forminos? That's what he said. I believe so. What a horrible fucking time for this conversation. Where is he? He's downstairs if you'd like to talk with him. I'm only here to convey the message. Come on. Might as well face the music now than later. By all means. And I'll just kind of like gesture to the door. Okay. You all head out, and it's actually catching him as he's going up the stairs um, to his room. And seeing Rem's. Uh, oh, um, Rem, uh, Gil. Um, what can I do for you? Come, uh, come sit with me in the, uh, in, in the common area. There's, there's some things I want to talk to you about. Um, concerning your request. Uh, of course. You guys, Would you like oh. me to accompany Rem? Yes. If he's asking for all of us, we might as well get this all out of the air right now. It's, it leading down back to the <laughs> dining area um, Suna and Zex reclaiming their seats as you all move around the same table uh, 
Um, well, um, n n now that I have the four of you in one place, um, really it's only you, Rem, that I need to ask. Um, I wanted to ask for, um, see if you would be willing to accompany me to my hometown, uh, Four Mount. I... Uh, sorry. Two things. Uh, one thing, uh, I'm not exactly on the best terms with my party members here right now because of some of their actions. I've... And partially, I guess, in some in part, some of mine. I've overheard. So, let's deal with that really quickly. Um, I can leave you guys alone if need be. I'm gonna look at Zex. Step outside for a second. Zex, I believe you have something to tell Ram. Yes. Um, I returned the objects that we took yesterday. I just want to know what made you think that was okay. I don't know. Seemed interesting. But was it fair, though? Since when have we ever taken things from the common folk? Are we bandits? Is that what we do? Is that what you do? I don't steal from people less than I am. It's not fair. I've done enough stealing in my life to not want to do any more of it. So why'd you return it? Because you felt bad or? Yeah. Because I was mad at you. That's exactly what it was because I felt bad. And I didn't tell anyone because I knew Gil might get pissed about it and I didn't want to deal with that. I want to insight check this I felt bad bullshit. All right. It's not bullshit. It's true. Uh, 18. You lying? No. You felt bad? Well, I'm glad you felt some form of remorse about it. And I guess we might as well bring it up. Gil, you want to tell them what happened before we go any further? Tell me what happened. On our walk, you so our, pleasantly called it. On our walk. Well, weren't you guys just talking? Yes well, and no. I've already explained it to Suna. And what do you make of it, Suna? Why don't you explain what happened to Zax? Gil, it's your story to tell, isn't it? You could say. You can tell him, and then I'll tell him my piece, and then I'll tell you what I know about this day ring business. If you so please. Zax. You are right in saying that we did talk because we did have a conversation while on our way to the fighters guild that is um and we exchanged some interesting words you could say up until the point of Rem challenging me more or less to a duel at least what I would think of it is. Um, Rem did in fact beat me, which I'm not ashamed of. And, um, let me die as well, actually. Oh, and, uh, had some certain altercations with a with a deity that I do choose to follow, and that's how I got this. 
gesturing to my face. Would you like to add anything, Rum? I didn't know about the altercation with the deity. Until now. Is that all? Is that all you have to add? Is there something more you think I should? Rem? So Zex is going to sit silent for like 15 seconds. Then he's going to stand up and he's going to say, Rem, do you know how hypocritical you are? Yep. Since when do we kill our own? Hmm? Since when do we steal from the common folk? I take no so pride in what I did. I didn't do it to be a better person. I did it because I thought it would help him. And I'd do it again. That doesn't justify your actions. I never said it did. But it justifies it in my eyes. I didn't put it him shouldn't. in a position where I didn't know it that I could help him. It should not justify your actions. You should not be killing your party members, Rem. What the hell? What were you thinking? Did you think Ah, uh, yes. If I just let this man die, it'll give him a better lease on life? Did it? Like, how can your thought process be that, ah, uh, yes, if I just kill this man, let him die, and then resurrect him, all will be well again? If anything, that's going to be emotionally scarring. How can you, after going through that yourself, then turn around and put someone else through it? Uh, out of character, he doesn't know this information. He does. I was killed by the people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How can I do it? Because I knew what it was like. I don't know how long you want to consider him dead. It was for less than a minute. But it was enough. It was my way of showing him that I care about him. And that we care about him. And that if he was gone, we'd be bothered by it. And you're bothered by it. And he sees that you're bothered by it. I fulfilled my goal. I find no pride in what I did. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you I find pride in what I did. But I did what I had to do. And I would do it again. Max is going to leave the table. He's going to go back up to his room. And he's going to think about what he's going to do next. As he's walking away, I'm going to tell him, you can go ahead and walk off like you want to. I did what I had to do. And if you don't you like did. it, we don't have to be around each other. You did not have to do that. There was no logical explanation at all. If there was no logical explanation, I would have did it. And I don't want to sit here and have you tell me about logic. I don't want to sit here and have you tell me about the value of life. You hardly value your own. I knew what I was doing, and I knew what I could handle, and I knew what he could handle. That doesn't make you, you right. You there was a different way of doing it, and we could have talked it out, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Gil himself, Gil, if we continued talking it out, what would have happened? Chances are very little. Do you fault me for what I did? Do you hate me for it? No. You've proven the point you need to. Some people learn by being told how to do something. Some people learn by demonstration. This was one of those times. So I find no joy or pride in what happened as much as you want to sit here and judge me for what I had to do. You didn't yeah, have to maybe do it was, anything. Maybe it wasn't my choice. Maybe I didn't have to. But as long as I continued to adventure with Gil, it would have happened no matter what. And if it happened later on, I might not have brought him back. 
You're telling me you see no logical thought to this. Are you overcome by emotion? I was overcome I... by emotion too, but I did what I felt was right. How much does Rum weigh? I think I'm going to have to make a strength check. If you come towards me, I will hurt you. I'm going to get up and drag Zax up the stairs. Do you resist? Well, you guys haven't seen me do anything yet, so... <laughs> I'm going to turn around, I'm going to walk up to Rum, and I'm going to try and pick him up by his collar. All right. Make a dexterity saving throw. Do I need to make a strength check as well? It's I'm not. It's as because it's a thing of as you're walking up first the dex saving throw. Because you guys That's are fine. Confrontational right now. Twenty one. Twenty one. You know that something happened, but you were aware that you were attacked. Are you still going to attempt to pick me up? Yes, I am. Okay, as. You, I need you to make an athletics check. Uh, Rem, you will contest it with either an athletics or acrobatics check. I'm going with acrobatics. Once, uh, once I see, um, nineteen, six, Zex, you grab Rem by the collar, and hoist them up. I'd, make a I'd constitution like to, saving throw. I'd like to intervene, please. Okay, Gil, before the con save, what are you doing? Um. Well, really, it's just once I see Zex grab Rem, um, I'm going to, like, put my hand... So I'm going to go to the right side of Rem, put my left hand on Rem's shoulder, and my right hand on Zex's arm. Mm -hmm. um, and just say, Zex, I don't know what you're planning to do, but whatever it is, it's not right. We and him killing you? Here. That was Rem's right? Rem's made mistakes, and yet you just made one not a day ago. None of us are clean here. Dax. I never pretended to be. No, but because of who you are, because of what you are, we assumed you had a higher moral standard than the rest of us. He's making Clearly the we were safe. wrong. I'm making the con safe? Okay. Unless you put me down, you're making the con save. 18. Okay, but you know what's coming. Yep. As you're talking, I if we're not being broken apart within the next six seconds, you're making another one. I'm going to speak. I'm going to say, because of who you are, because of what you are, because you consider to be yourself to be so much wiser than the rest of us. I thought you had a better moral standard than all of us. Clearly, I was wrong. I did Clearly, what I, felt I was can't really trust right. your guidance anymore. You never trusted my guidance, you fucking ingrate. How many doors did you kick down? How many times have I saved your measly fucking life? I don't need you to trust my fucking wisdom. Trust your own and see how quickly you die. Watch me. I'm going to throw him on the ground and then... As the final word, say, just because you think you're better than us doesn't give you the right to decide who lives and who the dies. And then I'm going to leave. I'm going in for an attack. Like a genuine um, attack. Like a I intervene? You can if you, you can I'm, try. Yeah. I'm also like intervening. Like, um, I, I have my hand on Rem. Mm -hmm. He threw me. You don't have me in your hands anymore. I'm I going like... past you to attack. I would like to, before Rem attacks, I would like to attempt to cast Earthbind on Rem. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. What is Earthbind? It is a second level spell. The floor is made of wood. Is it? Yes. Uh, I think it's the magical energy um yellow strips of magical energy loop around the creature yeah it's not it's not earth itself okay What's um the save? strength 
That's a dirty 20. <laughs> you still want me to cast um, or roll for Surge? Uh, yes, I do. Oh. 20. Okay. We're good. You're good. I'm going in for my uh, attack. All right. Gil, unless if you're trying to grab him, he's going to attack. I mean, I'm, try I'm trying to separate the two right now. I'm trying to pull mm -hmm. Rem back with my left and Zex away with my right. So should I make a strength check to, like, pull them apart as much as I can? Well, it... <sighs> If, if you're trying to hold Rem away... Yeah, I'll have to roll for initiative at this point. Yeah, so... <laughs> let's ro let's do that. Let's roll for initiative. <laughs> okay. Ooh. What you got? This was a... Eight 18, 18. That's a lot better than a 7! <laughs> 15 for Suna. 15 okay. for Zex as well. Alright, so Gil, yeah, first. you could do the first thing of <laughs> bracing the roll. Uh, bracing yourself between the two of them. Um, what's your dex, um, Zex? My dex is 16. Fuck, mine is 16. <laughs> It, it will uh, we'll do a roll off between you guys if you guys are fighting for who goes first yeah. Suna can go first I don't really care Okay. Either. so Gil you're just basically it's um, <laughs> it's basically you pushing against Rem are you trying to like just, are you trying to just be no. a wall between them or are you trying to grapple or what um I want to try and grab fire. Mm -hmm. So I want to get in between the two of them mm -hmm. and try and grapple Zex with Rem to my back. Okay. You'll make an athletics check. Zex, you make a uh, athletics or acrobatics if you want to try and make it out and not be grappled, or you can voluntarily fail. Uh, I am going to try and make an acrobatics check. Okay. Roll off. 19. I got a, I got a dirty 20. Oh, ha. Oh. This, no. Gil, this ma like this wall of flesh that is Gil, moves between you, Rem, and scoops up Zex. Uh, his back to you. 15. Uh, with initiative 15, Suna. What are you doing? Don't even know. Um, I'll try Earthbind again. Okay. You roll me another strength check, Rem. And nine. Check Failed or here. save save nine Fail. so okay. can i not move as it comes you watch as yellow bands sprout up from the floorboards and um kind of wrap around your legs your arms and your speed is zero my wild magic roll is 18 by the way okay thank you what else does it do does it just make me not unable to move yeah your speed is zero and you okay. and Gil is visually between you and Zex. I can still see Zex, right? Uh, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't believe Gil's that big. That's all that matters. No. As long as I can see him, it doesn't matter. All right, Zex. Um, it is now well, your can... turn. Even unless if Soon is doing anything else. No. Okay. Um, Zex is... um, I'm going to attempt to escape the grapple. All right. Is that as athletics or acrobatics? Acrobatics. Okay. What's the DC? 
Uh, it is Gil rolling against you. Uh, I don't think he can beat me this time. I got a 22. Am I rolling? You're yeah. rolling athletics. Athletics again. Okay. That's, you got a, what, 22? Yeah. There are two numbers on the die that I can roll. <laughs> Uh, I rolled neither of them. <laughs> As Zex, you push yourself out of Gilgamesh's grasp. That's your action. That's my action? Mm -hmm. I can still move, though, can't I? Yes. Hmm. What are you doing? Does Rem have his handy harbor sack on him? Yeah. Okay. Rem, if you come near me, I'm going to make sure neither of us makes it out of it, and then I'm going to storm off upstairs. All right. If I if I have enough movement for that, I'm going to go to my room. It's not that big of a dining area. I know. That way. <laughs> you... Walk I out. have to go up the stairs and yeah, to my room, and I only have 30 feet of movement. Yeah, but the staircase is also, you're out of view by the time it comes to Rem, so he can't see you. And also, Earthbind lasts for a minute, so you can get away, I guess, for lack of a better term. I can still speak. Yeah? I'm going to let him know your hollow threats don't scare me. You don't know what it's like to kill people that you care about. I guess. Final statement. I guess I might have to learn then. Come at me anytime you want, and I'll lay you out like I laid him out, and I won't be merciful about it. With those final words, Zex's footsteps go upstairs. And eventually, the minute passes, and the Earthbind retracts. I get to make a save out of it every turn, right? Um, it does not say you do. Yeah. It's a second level spell. Yeah, yep. I, I'll I'll keep looking, but it does not explicitly I can, say. I can get it right now because no spell holds you in place like that for the whole time. It doesn't say it can repeat. Really? Yeah. That's wild. We got multiple sources that say no. That, I'm just, looking at it. That's wild. You're just out of luck. So, in the minute that Rem is restrained, Gil. I could dispel magic this. Yeah, Gil and Suna. You just there with each other and Rem and a very confused, taken aback Darren. I mean, if she's still holding me and not letting it go for the full minute, I'm now attacking her. Oh, I wanted to... Earth kind of wanted to... I was just waiting a moment. Okay. I'm going to let it go as soon as I... Like a... I don't know. Maybe 15 seconds after Zex walks upstairs, I'm going to let it go. Okay. You can feel it. Release the just... tension and retract into the floor, disappearing. I'm sorry, Rem. Don't, 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 don't. Don't. I'm letting it go because you don't know us that well. But interfere in that again, and I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, I might have, to, I might have a pretty good guess just from hanging around. Let's just all take a moment to relax. And you calm love down to a make assumptions bit. on my character, don't you? Well, you speak for yourself. You love to think that I'm just this angry person that runs around and does this and does that and inflicts my own whims upon others, huh? Think you want to be angry? Well, I think all of you are a little misunderstood between each other. I don't think it's fair for me to assume that you just want to be angry. 
and just choose to go around doing what you feel you're forced to do. That's not fair for me to assume that. Maybe it's time for me to go home. Or maybe Kyleen and Lixen are looking for a cleric to go with them. Some people with some sense. Maybe it's time to adventure with somebody a little bit older than us. It's not even about age at this point. It's about a willingness to listen to others. And I may not be the best at it, but I did it more than anybody else. I can't speak for or against that. Is Dayron within, uh, like, vision? Oh, yeah. I'll speak with you about this tomorrow. Uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Dayron pushes away from the table and looks at each of you. N nods. Still... Confused, makes his way to his room. I'm gonna look at Gil. You didn't have to hold me back. You didn't have to hold him back. He was angry on your accord. You should have sided with him. I have no qualms against either of you. I have no problems with what you did, Rem. Apparently he does. Why don't you speak to him? Maybe see if he understands where I was coming from, if you explain it to him. You do understand where I was coming from, right? I do. I'll do my best. I'll give him a nod and head up to Zex's room. Alright. With you all standing aside making your way upstairs Gilgamesh, Zex already tucked himself away in his own room. Rem and Suna left downstairs in a now empty Mage's Hall the day now approaching halfway over. That's where we're going to end the session for tonight. We went Oof. a little long today. <laughs> that was a wild session. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, first things first, is everyone all right? Everyone's Coming out of character, being themselves for a second. <laughs> Give me a second. I gotta, I gotta cool down. I gotta oh. cool down. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling fine. I got yeah, out of character. Down. Everything is cool. Oh, oh. I, I, I know. I'm, it's, it's. I'm feeling great right now. You guys are amazing at separating the characters, but god damn. <laughs> Gil's the. <laughs> Gil and Suna just being a wall between the other two. It was, it was insane. It was absolutely insane. Absolutely I'm, wild. I am surprised that I rolled well enough three times. I mean. Or two, two times yeah. to not activate wild magic. Yeah. I'm surprised Earthbind isn't a, like a, like a save every turn. It's, 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 it's wild. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't expect to get attacked this session. Out of character, I knew that Zex was gonna be mad. I didn't expect to get attacked. Yeah, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> but I was, I was ready. I was gonna lay him out, cause I'm, I'm, I'm riding the high of murder right now. 
that's and, that's kind of part of the reason that I stopped you is because I'm like, oh no, I know, like I know Rem will not stop if I don't make him stop. The so only, I didn't make him. The stop. only reason I didn't continue to attack after that point was one because he walked away, and two, Gil didn't need to get his ass beat in the middle of this again. <laughs> Even though all no of my cantrips only require sight, of which I felt like James cheated his role. The, it's, <laughs> everyone's good. Everyone's fine. Uh, it'll make for a great beginning of the I, next session. I oh, didn't yeah. catch it early enough, but I was gonna, I originally wanted to Earthbind his ex, but I caught everything just a little too late. Oh mm. yeah, I was of like, course. Uh, Earthbind the man <laughs> with no strength. You guys keep pushing me over. I'm gonna start exploding. I didn't push you over. I just stopped you from moving. <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered. The only reason he got away without getting hit is because he uh, he beat me on a initiative. 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 Initiatives. I, I was gonna expand beyond this point. It was gonna get much worse. So you got oh, with, with 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 time and distance to hopefully allow these two members of the group to cool off we'll return to you guys next week for session 34 of Paphlios. i'd like to thank of course helminia james suzanne and alpha and i would like to remind everyone especially in a session this heated everyone's okay these are characters and i'm back to claire <laughs> Uh, no, it's fine. It's it's what it is, and these guys, I I, can't, I don't even feel confident saying going through my stuff every week. This is putting each other through the ringer now. <laughs> should, uh, should we tell chat that the moment this ends, we're gonna laugh about it? Uh, oh, yeah. You guys are allowed to laugh about it right now, by all means. Uh, we'll have a good time once stream ends. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk about what to do next because none of us know how to deal with these emotions. I have two things I need to talk about after stream ends, but you know, we'll talk about a lot of other things I'm sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. This is um I wonder who's gonna get the as soon as I say and that is stream, they're gonna be Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> who's getting that one this 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 it's gonna be me. It's gonna be me. <laughs> I feel like all four of you think it's gonna I, be you. Gonna I be need me. answers, JC. I need answers. Mm-hmm. All right, but thank you everybody so much for watching. Um, thank you guys for coming and joining us in this session. It's been a lot of fun. I still enjoy the hell out of it, and I'm hoping that these guys do as well. Um, we're happy to bring you this weekly show that all of us take so much care in. I will see all of you in the next video or stream. Remember to follow if you're not followed yet and help support us. You guys are amazing by just watching the stream. I couldn't ask for, I couldn't ask for a better time. Thank you everybody so much for watching. My name is JC, I am the DM for this game and I will see you all in the next video or live stream. Take care and have a great night. <laughs>